Fighting off the Kentucky Summer Heat in Project Zomboid can be a real pain to manage, but nothing too worrying, as the worst that happens is you get thirsty quicker. Today, though, I look to change that, as instead of the heat being a background thing, it will take priority, because now it can actually kill me. Anyways, everyone, welcome to the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge, where I will be dealing with extremely high temperatures and learning ways to stay cool in this deathly heat. Which means I can't overexert myself fighting off zombies or running, wear any kind of clothing at all, and I also can't go outside during the peak summer days. On top of that, the water has shut off instantly, making it a finite resource within this desert-themed map. With my big goal today, is reaching a self-sustaining life trapped within this town, all within a supercut for your viewing pleasure. Wish me luck, everyone. I'm gonna need it. Is it hot out here? Or is it just me? Anyways, welcome everyone to a whole new breed of challenge. A challenge that will probably end in a very slow and painful death. Today, our hero is Summer Steve, a homeless, stouty, handy, fast learner scrap warrior who's gonna be able to forage and survive his way in a not so forgiving world. As you see, we are in a very hot place. Now, I don't have a digital watch, but the temperatures can reach up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit. There's not a lot of water, so we are going to have to deal with a lot if we want to survive. Thankfully, this is one of the only challenges where starting with nothing in terms of clothing is actually the best deal for us, as we don't get as warm and overheated. Because in this mod pack, if we get too overheated, there is a solid chance of us getting sick and dying from heat stroke. Anyways, I think it's about time we get a move on. We're currently on the tracks right outside of town, so my first goal is to check out some of the nearby homes inside this town. Now I will say, out of every single challenge I've done so far with the weather, this one is going to be the most dangerous, as we are going to need to keep an eye on our core temperatures for a good chunk. As you see, just hopping the fence made me unpleasantly hot and slightly thirsty. And if you see this bar over here, if it gets in the yellow region, that's when my life starts to get into the danger zone. So I'm going to need to carefully plan out every action that Summer Steve does in order to not die horribly. Thankfully, when we get inside, that should cool us down quite a bit, as we still have power, and with power comes air conditioning. Don't ask me when the power goes out. I don't want to think about that. Right now, we need to solve our first problem. We're pretty thirsty. So let's mosey our way over to the kitchen, wherever the hell that is. Right here. Awesome. And that is a double stacked counter. Can't say I've ever seen that before, but it is what it is. Oh, one more thing that I do need to mention. Also, one thing that I will mention, the water is out as well, which means that on this uh, isolated town, there is a chance that we just completely run out of water. So I'm going to need to ration it out and save every drop I can get. Let's go loot this house, though, and see what we got cooking in here. Which includes... Nothing in the kitchen other than a single lemon. I'll take it. A how-to-use generators manual. That's actually pretty damn huge. A free curtain that I can rip up into sheets. A bathroom with some basic medical supplies and more water if I get a container. A fanny pack, which I can use to collect some items without warming me up. And lastly, we have ourselves First Aid Volume 2. Not the best, but I'll take a single lemon in a how to use generator manual. And the main reason why I wanted to do this series in the first place is I kind of wanted to, you know, chill out with the general challenge a little bit. Because instead of exploring around the area and being a full murder psycho, I am quite literally trapped on this single town. And it's up to me to see how I'm going to be spending my last days in this barren desert wasteland. What I'm trying to say is it's not going to be fun. Anyways, let's go move our way over to the next house to see if there's any better of a chance of us getting a watch, because I would really like to know what time or temperature it is. And I think we just found our next target, a simple trailer. We're going to have to make it pretty quick, though, as hopping these fences does increase our core temperature and we are warming up pretty quickly. Thankfully, we can just hop indoors and completely negate the heat damage. 
At least until the power goes out, then I might need to think a little bit more. It also doesn't look like we're gonna get much out of here. Nope, all we have in here are some books, which I will be taking, especially Electrician Volume 1. Not only that, but I think we should make ourselves a nice newspaper hat. There's barely any insulation there, and it makes me look pretty cool. Okay, it really doesn't. I look like a baby. <laughs> okay, whatever, whatever. You may not like it, but this is peak performance, baby. Let's get out and move on to the next house. And by house, I mean shack. Ah! Yeah, that's right. This ain't your normal average Zomboid run. I'm rocking some mods on this bad boy, and one of them allows me to punch through windows. So now all we gotta do is equip our ripped sheet and remove the broken glass that way. In really good time as well, because punching that window did increase our temperature. What do we got in here? Hopefully a weapon. Ask and you will receive. That's a free crowbar, a free hand torch, a box of nails, a needle, and some twine. I'll take all of it. Okay, it seems like the next house down the street does have some zombies, and this is where the real fun begins. Because doing any action in the game increases your body temperature, I am gonna need to pick fights extremely well, which means even though I can totally thrash a group of 20 zombies with a crowbar, I'm gonna have to play it safe and play it slow, most importantly. And that's why I really like the idea of this challenge. I'm really gonna have to play it slow. I mean, just going out two feet in front of that trailer, we are already thirsty. Thankfully, there's not too many to actually prove a threat to me right now. And oh my, is it a good time? We are already dying of thirst. It's been like five seconds. Let me in right now. Oh God, it gets bad. It gets really bad out here. Oh, we're in. I'm actually gonna drop the damn newspaper hat because it is technically warming me up, and I need some damn water right now. Ugh, mana from the gods. That should keep us going. So, what do we got in here? Nothing, that's what we have. Absolutely nothing other than some pasta on the stove. You know what? I'm gonna go eat this pasta and cook it up, and I'm gonna be using that pasta pan to carry water with me. In this challenge, getting as much water collected as possible is going to be a necessity. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that Summer Steve here needs to become a water baron. Because as time goes on with the water being out, it's going to slowly leak out and disperse into the air. Which means the quicker I capitalize on this, the better things will be for me. So let's cook up this pasta, add in a little bit of lemon zest to prevent depression, and eat this up. Delicious. Now that that's taken care of, we can go fill up the saucepan and carry some water with us. It should keep us hydrated, and more importantly, it's gonna keep us alive. Time to take out the trash and loot the goodies, which includes a full gas can, a hammer, a, f a generator right off the bat. Okay, this is actually kind of huge. We have quite literally entered the third house and we already have the blueprints to get uh, a free freezer to, to preserve food and, uh, and live out our life. Okay, not bad at all, man. I'll be taking the hammer and the propane torch right off the bat. Now, you'd be absolutely insane if you think I'm gonna start up the generator inside of this place. That's, that's an easy way of dying and gassing yourself. But I will be checking upstairs to see if this place will be a viable base for us in the upcoming days. It's got pretty big bathrooms that I will grift as much water from as I can. A pretty decent bedroom with no bags, sadly. That's what I'm really looking out for right now. A very peaceful and serene office with greenery that's sure to die out soon. I'll be real, I don't think I'm gonna stay here. For a long duration, that is, as I do want to grab the generator for later, but we are pretty far from the actual town. We're on the outskirts, you might say. As you can see from that fence line, as soon as I hop over that way, then we'll be in the good areas. But one thing I can do right now is stay here for the night as it is getting pretty dark. So let's go clear out these zombies and move our way back on inside while also keeping an eye on our core temperature. I get extremely worried about it. We also got a blue digital watch, which means I can finally tell you the temperature that trash, or sorry, force of habit, Summer Steve is dealing with, which is currently 117 degrees of pure torture. 
Yeah, that explains the core temperature. <laughs> it is also 8.50 p.m., so it is a very good time to call it quits for the day. But I kind of want to loot at least one more house as I don't have any food supplies at all. So we're going to slowly funnel in these zombies and kill them while moving back to our base to cool down every few zombies or so. Wish me luck, and hopefully we'll find some goodies at that house right up there. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention the main thing that good old Summer Steve is going to be good at is foraging through the ground and finding extra food. I thought foraging would be a very good skill to have, as it allows me to find materials that I otherwise would not be able to get, especially in such a finite world. For now though, let's move our way in and focus on the things that we can loot today. We're in. No alarm either. And already we've hit the jackpot, just for the cans alone. We're going to be filling up all of these in our sink. Actually, I'm going to be taking all the water from this house. We're going to we're going to grift every single drop of water we can get. All right. In this universe, water is the new gold. And it looks like we're going to be getting a lot of containers to work with. Not only that, we got ourselves a bowl of soup, canned sardines, a can opener, a freshly cooked steak and absolutely massively a a pot of pasta which i can add in chips and steak into <laughs> i'll do that for uh for lunch when we get back to our house we also have a cooking and first aid book some basic medical supplies that i cannot use a pencil and pen which is completely useless because our map is actually pretty screwed up so yeah we're not going to be able to mark things down this series but at the very least, we have another fanny pack that I can use. Hell yeah, looking good, Steve. And that seems to be it here. Let's go bring back all of our supplies and hunker down for the rest of the night. Even when it's 11 p.m. at night, it is still 100 degrees out. It's bad out here, but we do have some rosemary. See, foraging is going to pay out in the long run, I'm sure of it. Anyways, we're back. So let's go make up some food and also start to think about our water situation. And by food tonight, I mean I am quite literally just going to mix in anything I can into this pasta to make it not so depressing, which includes broccoli, rosemary, and a little bit of fresh steak and chips. It's still pretty sad, but it's a lot better than what I was dealing with before. So we'll pop that in the oven, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna be drinking every single beer can and beer bottle I can for the night. As much as I love beer, I love water even more, so collecting it is going to be extremely nice. We gotta get on that water collector mindset immediately. Thankfully, I did install a mod that allows you to fill up even cans with water, so we are gonna be able to get a very nice stockpile soon. Which means we're going to be sucking the entirety of this house dry of its of its liquids. Not bad at all. Our soup is also done, so I'm going to be having that in the morning. For now, we need to get some sleep and I will show you what we're dealing with in the morning. And just like that, we have survived our second day. Looking a little worse for wear, but we are in our element. We have collected a couple of beer cans, a couple of water bottles, and a saucepan of water. We're going to be taking a couple water bottles with me, and I'm going to be saving everything else for later. We'll be eating our soup and moving on to the next few homes. I think we can go check out the city when we're a little bit more ready. And by ready, I mean next episode. <laughs> For now, I want to drop off as much as I can here, read up my generator manual so we have that going for us in case the power does go out early. Also, instead of using the crowbar, I'm going to be switching over to the hammer and the garbage bag so I can carry a little bit more with me. Okay, now that we got all of that settled, let's move out once again. The main things that I do want to look out for right now is just more food, especially more water, and if I could help it, a welder mask. So instead of actually hopping the fence to the city, I can just disassemble it and save myself a lot of temperature. But the main reason why I do want to disassemble the fence is because there are two tall fences and I'm a little bit worried on what that would do to my body if I had to hop two consecutive fences and run between them avoiding zombies. To me, it sounds like a recipe for disaster, so I really, really, really want to make sure that I that it's my last resort. Oh, there's also a zombie in here. Hello, zombie. Goodbye, zombie. 
What do we got? A metal pipe, nails, a, a, a carrot seeds enough to, <laughs> and a sledgehammer. Okay. That's that that's actually just as good as a welder mask the more I'm thinking about it. Yeah, that that'll do the trick. All right. So we got ourselves a key to the city as well. What else do we got though? A trouble huge for digging up worms. We we also did pick up a bucket which is absolutely massive for us. A saw which is also huge, a battery could come in handy, a couple of 12 gauge shotgun shells, and an empty gas lantern. Not bad overall, especially for the first episode. But I do want to check out one more house before I get any ideas. That's what I would have loved to say, but it looks like the street of homes ends right down here. There are the train carts, but I think we can probably just do a little bit of foraging and then we move out to the city next episode. Overall, I'd say it's a pretty productive day. I mean, look at our character. Sure, we don't have any clothing to our name, but we look pretty kitted out, especially with the real nice gas lantern on our hip. So I think today is going to be just fine. Is that a freaking toolbox? That it is. I think we're going to clear out a path to the fence line today and then explore it after that. While also foraging for any food and supplies I can get my hands on. I mean, hey, we even got some berries out here. Don't ask me how they're growing, but they are. I don't know actually if they're good or not, so I won't be eating them. But that is free foraging XP for our build. Oh yeah, real soon we're gonna be finding machetes out here. Just you wait, and this is what's gonna save me in the long run, I think. But we have finally reached the house, so let's go take all of the water from the sinks and move back to our- Oh wait, this is our house. Okay, never mind, we're gonna be chilling here then. Alrighty, now that we're back at our house, let's go kill some damn zombies. There really isn't too many to be a formidable threat to us, especially when we are very close to a cooldown point. But I do need to be prepared to run away at a moment's notice. We can't get too complacent. As soon as we get complacent, we get a little bit silly. And by silly, I mean a little bit dead. And don't mind me if I take that bandana. There's not too much insulation, and I think there will be a time to where I just say drip over survival. But today is not that day, but I will keep the bandana on me. We got two more zombies, and I think we will have a pretty clear cut avenue. Just like that. Let's go pop open a big old hole and move on over. And it's as easy as that. The only thing that I will say is that smashing down those two fences warmed up our character pretty fast. So it's a good thing I am doing this now in bite-sized pieces. I'm gonna go run back, cool down, and we can complete the other half of zombies. Now, this is the real reason why I don't want to stay here despite there being a generator, fuel, and a pretty nice house to defend, is because running from place to place is really bad. Dare I say even worse than the Cryogenic Winter series, just because of how little I can do in the amount of time that I have. So I am definitely aiming for a more localized base to where I won't have to travel as much to get from point A to point B. Okay, that's all the bozos taken care of. Let's hurry up and pop the hole in this fence before I get any warmer. I want to do this in one go and then run my way all the way back to my house. Awesome. Let's get the hell back before we overheat. And I will probably leave the sledgehammer at the house as it does weigh quite a bit. Though I will see what I can pack with me. What good timing to end it off though as we are getting extremely close to the danger zone which is going to be the yellow core temperature zone. That's when I can develop heat stroke, get sick, actually sick, like fever in game and die. It's a very bad thing to feel, so I really don't want to get to that point. But we make it back just in time. You know, out of all characters I've made in Project Zomboid, I don't think any of them have seemed this capable. We have survived one whole day, six hours, killing 26 zombies, with it being currently 3 p.m. And if you couldn't remember the last episode, today is going to be the day we actually go into town instead of just skirting around on the sidelines. But it is a little bit too late to warrant such a big journey across the street. So I'm actually going to go and forage for the rest of the day, building up our skills and preparing our survivor mindset.
After that, though, we will pack up all of our stuff and get moving. The main things I'm going to be taking is probably a little bit of gas, supplies, and food slash water. I'll remember that the generator is here, but it's not really at the top of my list to take right now. Anyways, it's time to get some foraging done. We're sitting at a solid three and a half foraging skill, so we should find some goodies here and there. Hopefully. Which includes mushrooms. I won't be eating those because I don't know if they're poisonous or not. Chipped stones. More stones. It's really just a bunch of stones that we've been finding. Um, It's not really been that good for us. It's also 124 degrees out. So that's fun. That's really fun. I don't think it's at the boiling level, but I'm sure as hell you can cook eggs at this point. Yeah, just a bunch of stones. Why was I surprised foraging in a desert? I was hoping we would have found like some insects, you know, to throw in a stew, but we really did not get so lucky. The one thing I can do is move back to our original base and siphon out all the water inside that trailer. It's also really funny to see how fast my body temperature cools down as soon as I make my way indoors. Instead of being at like a solid crimson red, we are now chilling at a very peaceful and serene blue. Anyways, give me the cooking pot. And I was about to say give me the bucket, but I honestly don't know where that went. I kind of lost it and I just checked the garage. There was nothing in it. So you know what? The cooking pot will just have to do. Let's just go and get our water right now so we can have a good night's rest. Oh, wait, I do have a bucket. Where is it at, though? Oh, you know where the bucket is. It's inside my garbage bag. OK, that's a bit of a that's a bit of a smooth brain moment from me. I almost forgot I had this damn thing. Well, that solves it. Now we can go grab all of our water that I deserve. Oh yeah, fill that bucket right up. Also, why the hell is there a toilet in the, in the shower? <laughs> I guess you kill two birds with one stone that way. Can't say I've ever seen that type of uh, bathroom before though. Is that it in here? I think it is, okay. Oh no, there's another bathroom right in here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I will say one thing, we do have ourselves one hell of a surplus of water. I'm going to have to leave some here, though, but it's a good thing that we are taking out, taking it out of the sinks before it can properly drain out. So I guess I will see all of you in the morning on when we make the big move and decide what to take with us on this journey. So I welcome you to day number two. Despite it being like 3 to 4 a.m. out, it is pretty damn bright outside. So I think it's about time we get a move on and decide what we want to take with us. First of all, let's see what we have. We have a paltry amount of food, including a bowl of stale soup that I'm going to eat right now. A decent stockpile of water, which I will not take with me as water weighs quite a bit. And an assortment of random bits and baubles, including some crucial tools that I will need, like the nails, the lighter, the propane torch saw, needle, twine, bandana, shotgun shells, can opener, suture needle, and that's gonna be it. I don't want to take too much else, as we are gonna need to think about our weight. Another thing that I will take with me is this bandana, which I will tie it around my head. That should not warm us up to an inordinate amount, and it makes me feel a lot cooler than I am. A big waddling man baby in the middle of the desert. Let's go pack up all of the food. I burnt the damn soup. Of course I did. And let's get moving. All of it will be going inside my garbage bag, by the way. Oh, and I will be taking a full bucket of water with me as my portable water bottle. I'll come back for the other water later if I do need it, and that also includes the gasoline and generator here. I don't have much more space to go through, and I really don't want to move out here with an over-encumbered body, because I feel like that would be an easy way to off myself. So let's get moving. It's actually pretty cool out right now, being a solid 110 degrees right now, so this is a perfect time to find a new house to lay low for a bit in. I just gotta kill any zombies in the way. Hopefully we can make it over before things get too dire. Oh, there's not a lot out here. <laughs> okay, I'm probably gonna have to ignore a few zombies while I am moving through here. 
Let's see. Okay, there is some type of building up to the north. I think that looks like a pretty cool base to stay at. Oh, I really don't want to pick a fight right now. Our body heat generation is picking up quickly with there being a lot of zombies. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to move a little bit faster away from these uh, bozos before they get me in a compromised position. Thankfully, we have a pretty massive barn slash house right up here that I can cool off at. Hey, this might be a pretty nice base. Oh, yeah, it's got the big garages. Okay, let's see how it is inside, though. Please let me in. I am dying out here. Oh, my God, these windows won't open. Please, <laughs> I'm going to die. Oh, okay, okay, we're in, we're in, we're in. Let's go open up these windows before... Oh, no, the zombies are going to break the windows. You know what? That's fine. That's a risk I'm willing to take. Let's fight these bozos inside to where I don't have to worry about just keeling over and dying. At least I can fight these bozos inside where I am in my element. Bring it on. Oh, wait. You can't because Summer Steve is stronger than you. Bah. Nice. Now, oh, 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 I was about to say, now we have free reign over this damn place, but we just had to take care of one more person. Nice. Okay, now that we have the threat taken care of, let's go see how this place looks. There's a gas station up to the north that is actually huge. And you know what? I'm, I'm kind of vibing with this place. Let's see what we got inside here, though. We got a very spacious bathroom. Wow, two bathrooms. They even got urinals packed in this place. I... What kind of place is this? We got a ham radio station and a computer with another computer room. Okay, the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm realizing that this is some kind of office area and not someone's home. Damn, but it is a cool spot to be. They got a freaking jukebox, a water cooler, a nice fridge with a pie slice. Don't mind if I do take that. Ice cream and a chicken. I'm going to eat that ice cream right now. That is huge for my morale. There's also a sink. Also, massive water cooler right there. I did install a mod that allows you to transport those, so that is a very good find. But overall, I don't really want to stay here the more I'm looking at it. Cool location, but there's not really a lot of places to move through, you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to be closer to the action. But I will take the bottle from the dispenser out. I won't be able to carry it around, but I sure as hell... Actually, I might be able to carry it around. Hold on here. If it doesn't weigh too much, I might just do that. Never mind, it weighs like seven pounds. Yeah, I'm just gonna fill up my water bottle and call it a day. The one thing I can do right now is grab this to fill up every other sink in this building. So at least none of this will go to waste as time goes on. Yeah, that's pretty damn smart of me. And it looks like I may or may not have aggroed an entire zombie horde in here. Yeah, this place is tainted. I don't want to stay here at all. If only the zombies would decay quicker because it's so hot out. But I don't think that's a thing yet. It feels extremely nice fighting zombies indoors, though. You know, it really puts the power back in my hands. Anyways, we got as much water as we could out of here. Almost a full water jug. I'll have to remember this for later. Let's keep moving, though. Daylight is our lifeline, and I gotta find a cool spot to be that isn't so dirty and far away from the town still. I'm feeling pretty good about this one, though. It's only a solid 111, which is a very cool temperature compared to how it was uh, yesterday. Oh yeah, it isn't bad here at all, especially when I am so close to structures now that I can dip in and out whenever I need to cool down. Being out in the middle of the boonies was terrible, and it feels good to be out of it now. But after we kill these two zombies, we'll go briefly check out the gas station, which is some place I might stay at. I'm not adverse to staying at a gas station. We'll see, we'll see. We're in. Let's see what we got here. Propane tank, a whole bunch of food, empty gas cans, car parts. Okay, this is a very good spot to be. I am going to go eat any of the perishables inside here, though, if there are any, as I do have food spoilage set to pretty high to simulate the, you know, the high temperatures. Oh, damn, there's even gas in here. Okay, we have a very good setup right now. If I can bring back that generator back at the other place right now. We basically have infinite gas already. Not really a base-worthy spot, though, as I will numb on the shortbread here. 
So let's continue looking through the area for our new home. And honestly, I'm kinda eyeing up the movie theater. I did say that I didn't want to stay at a, you know, at an office building, but I think a movie theater base would be pretty freaking cool. I kind of want to check this out, but I will see if there's any other nearby buildings. And if not, we're going to the damn movie theater. That's that's such a cool base. Let's see, there's a store up there with a bunch of zombies. The movie theater is also surrounded by fences. Yeah, you know what? I'm doubling down. Let's sleep at the damn star Eplex place. I mean, how could you not, right? This seems like a very cool spot. But it depends on how cool the interior is as well. Please let me in. It's unlocked. Oh, thank you. Okay, let's go take out the trash. Preferably outside so I don't have to bloody the insides with their blood. Okay, we're in. Let's see, it has a nice little snack front room. Pretty cool stuff. Some pops, which I will drink right now because I forgot to pack water with me. Let's just take care of these zombies right now. Thankfully, no zombies in here. One bozo here. And upstairs, we have just a basic storage room. All right. I'll be honest, this is probably not the best place to stay at. Oh man, I was really hoping for this one. Though the more I think about it, the more I kind of just want it to work. I think we might be able to pull it off. Also, I do know that there's a shotgun on that dead zombie. I will be taking it later. I just need to look at what I'm working with right now. So we have a storage room upstairs. And in here we have a couple of massive movie theater rooms. With the back having another jump scare zombie. Serves you two bozos right with a very nice back room with tools and supplies. Yeah, you know what? If I can disassemble these beds here, or at least pick them up, I can't. Okay, that kind of ruins it all. Um, <laughs> I was hoping I would have been able to disassemble these, and then that way, I, you know, I could, like, build out and stuff, and it'd be extremely cool. But I cannot do that. Oh, bummer, dude. That would have been such a cool base. Well, at the very least, there are a lot of sinks here that I can use to store water with. Also a free burger, which is pretty rad as well. Okay, let's look around a bit more. Who knows, our dream house could be right around the corner here. Actually, the more I'm thinking about it, I can just use my damn sledgehammer. Yeah, you know what? Good old Summer Steve is gonna double down. Movie theater base, it's a go. For one, there's no windows. Two, there's no back rooms. It's gonna be extremely defendable. Three, there's a bunch of storage locations. And four, it's just cool. So what I'm thinking, right, is we can destroy all the chairs in the middle with our sledgehammer, which we can do, and we can set up like a massive survivor house in one room, right? We can, we can kit it out, we can divide it using lines, I can even paint it, and I can also, okay, I can't move the, the lights over, but you know, you know where I'm going, right? Yeah, I think we're going to be able to pull this one off just fine. But that's going to be like, you know, in the future. Right now, all I want to do is clear out any nearby threats. And to drop off all of my food that I have right now. This is a really good spot for it. Yeah, you know what? I think we're going to do just fine in here. Yeah, 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 I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. This is gonna be a really cool base once I once I get it rolling. Especially since we have so many damn bathrooms and stuff as well. Yeah, we are gonna be eating good for this day. I'll organize my inventory later though for now. I just wanna drop off as much as I can to bring back all, all of the supplies that I left in the other spots, including the massive water jug. So let's go pay that gas station another visit with a mission this time. God, I am filthy, but also cleaning myself would waste water. <laughs> Why did I take the sledgy with me as well? Um, don't really need that, but I, I guess I already have it with me. Give me that holster. Nice. So, what do we actually have in here? Chips, cupcakes, pop, all easy grabs, empty gas cans, car batteries. I'll leave the gas cans here because it's a gas station and I will definitely be back here. Pop, chocolate chip cookies, orange soda, up the wazoo. 
a couple of propane tanks, which is extremely cool. Don't need that until I get into welding. And by the way, I will get into welding. I installed the scrap warrior mods because I kind of want to make like a Mad Max-esque type situation later. But right now, we just got to focus on our bare survival needs, which includes strawberry shortbreads, okay? I would never leave home without it. And lastly, there's a couple more pops and a mint candy with a lighter. Overall, not the worst gas station, but definitely not good in any regards either. Let's go drop it off back home, and then I'm gonna move all the way down to the big barn radio station area. Ooh, also, this zombie has some heart boxers on him. That is one of the only clothing options I can actually take without sacrificing my coolness, so I will take that. And by coolness, I mean not character coolness, but legitimate coolness. I'll also drop off my sledgehammer and shotgun on the front shelf, dropping off my pop and what little supplies I have. Okay, let's go grab the rest of the goods right now. Out of the way, bozo. I got places to be. Here we are. I hope you guys didn't miss me, because I sure as hell missed this massive water jug that weighs 12 kilos. Another thing that I really need, because I am going to be sleeping at the, uh, theater base location, is going to be a piece of furniture that I can sleep on that gives me an average bed quality, like this couch right here. Could I please take that with me? Thank you very much. I'll equip that as my primary, equip my water jug as my secondary, and bring this bucket of water with me to go. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Oh yeah, I also need a microwave so I can actually uh, cook food there as well. Nice, we got all of our bases covered. Let's get the hell out of here. Oh, and when I mentioned that it was going to be a cool day and I was feeling it, I in fact lied as it's 125 degrees out right now. Not exactly the best, but I'm sure we can manage. And now that we do have our water collecting supplies, I will be filling up every single bit of water I can inside this jug, inside the bathroom. It's better in this jug than anywhere else because it won't have the chance to leak. Okay, that's all I can handle though. 20 pounds of pure blue goodness. I'm going to be sleeping out in the front just for now as it has everything that I need. So yeah, I think we're going to set up our nice comfy chair right in the front as well. Hell yeah, isn't this one hell of a base? It's compact and also extremely dangerous. I should probably change that. The way I'll be doing that is by locking the door. I'm just kidding. I'm gonna go in the back, grab a shelf, and place it nearby so I can kind of have a bit of an airlock when I do go to sleep. Much, much, much better. Now I have an extra lock, and I will also probably drop a snack machine in front of that little alleyway there so I'm not dooming myself that way. It's only 5 p.m. though, so I think after we cool down sufficiently, I'm gonna go move out and go check out that building up that a ways. Honestly, I'm hoping it's a liquor store so I can have a lot more containers for water. As we do boogie our way on down though, I will be keeping tabs just to make sure I'm not biting off more than I can chew. This hammer has been extremely nice for us, though I might upgrade to the ax that I saw in the movie theater earlier. For now, though, it's doing its job pretty damn well. Huh, this building is really weird. I thought there would have been like a back entrance or something, but it is quite literally just one locked door. I wonder what kind of store this is. Well, I'm going to go move back to the to my base. I'm going to go get some sleep as we are getting drowsy and I'll go check that out later. Also, I will say this place is extremely nice for a base as it's all fenced in. It is it is as good as it can get, man. And I am all for it. Also, you, could you zombies slow down for a minute? I got to go back inside and cool down for a minute and I'll be ready to fight you. Thank you. Up and we are getting queasy. Yeah, we're getting back inside right now. That was extremely scary to see. If I stay out any longer, I will die. So that's exactly what I'm talking about. It really does creep up on you. Even when we are playing it kind of safe, it, it, it is always looming over our head. Though we should be cool right on inside here for now. Let's see that queasiness go away. That it did. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Overall, not the worst day, and I think we've definitely earned some microwaved steak. 
Oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, because it is only 8 p.m. for me, I want to dismantle some of these chairs right now. Thankfully, our night's rest was pretty uneventful. Also, thankfully, working through the middle of the night made me wake up at a very solid 6 a.m. in the day. It feels really weird to be surrounded by snack and soda machines when I go to sleep, but I enjoy how delightful these colors are dancing around in my mind and my actual not mind. It's also a solid 113 degrees Fahrenheit, so I definitely think we're going to get the most done with our day during the mornings and not even dusk. Dusk is really bad as well. Yeah, mainly the mornings and I might need to actually adjust to a to a night sleeping schedule just so I can avoid the really bad temperatures because it is extremely easy to die. Um, I'll be honest, I was a little bit scared on how close I even got today. We only did get the slightly damaged, and there is a very easy way to offset the sickness, as I can just eat a bunch of food, but it's still scary to see my health tick down, you know? Anyways, knock knock, open up! <laughs> Summer Steve is here to introduce you to one hell of a party! Well, 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 I was kinda hoping it would've been like a secret gun store. But... A massive bar is not bad either. Anyways, what do we got? Uh, just alcohol. So much alcohol. Water bottles up the wazoo. So many containers. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And it's so close to our movie theater. We should be able to lug it right back and forth. Okay, not bad, not bad. I almost want to drink all of the alcohol right now. And I might go do that. I just gotta make sure that, you know... The, 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 the coast is clear because it's much better as water containers than anything else. Though, I also need to think about food because food is going to be limited. Oh, there's so much to juggle in this series. For now, let's just focus on getting it back to base and then I'll figure out the logistics. Yeah. Oh, it also looks like this place was a half bar, half biker uh, strip club as well. <laughs> I, I see the pole in the middle now. How could I miss that? But so far, it's been great in here. Oh, there's even a club hammer with some basic supplies. I'll take the club hammer for a secret surprise tool later. So out of that entire haul, we have four bottles of bourbon, one orange soda, two peanuts, two, three wines in our main inventory, including a baseball bat and a jar filled with water. In our actual garbage bag, we have four things of beer, eight things of bourbon, three chips, four pops, nine wines. That is huge, and that is all I'm going to be drinking for the next couple of days, so I can slowly siphon out all of the water inside of the sinks and restrooms in that place. Let's go head back to our base very quickly as we are taking on a bit of damage and our body heat generation is a lot warmer than usual because you know extremely heavy load does that and once we get back we can finally enjoy oh you gotta be kidding why do these zombies keep on migrating to the entrance of my damn house it's so rude of them wait where did she go she just kind of disappeared on me and that's kind of terrifying well doesn't matter i can drop off my stuff without too much of a problem then okay we're in I'm just gonna drop off the garbage bag wholesale and I'll settle out the rest of it later. Really the one thing that I am waiting for is the power to go out, because if you didn't know, when the power goes out, uh, the, the temperatures also go down, so this is no longer going to be a safe haven for me. Even if I do get the generator in here, I don't think it'll bump back the AC up, which is extremely sad, but I don't make the rules. I think this will be a very good spot to end the episode as we have made it to our new home. I can't wait to spruce this damn place up. I mean, it's already looking really nice, but once I get in that back room and really work my magic, you're gonna see everything click together in a very nice way. You know, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm starting to realize that all of this blood and viscera on Summer Steve is actually a pretty good sunscreen. And I have good news and bad news. Which I will tell you after I'm done taking out the surrounding zombies. Now that we have that taken care of, I can tell you about the good news. Number one, we have so much alcohol and chips on us that we're going to be coasting for a pretty good time. 
Number two, the loot in this town is extremely low. I was wondering why I wasn't getting a lot of modded spawns and food in my homes, and I figured out that this map mod is actually around three to two years old. So the loot distribution tables are a little bit scuffed. I was wondering why I wasn't getting a lot of food and supplies out of homes, and it explains it pretty well. And honestly, I welcome the challenge. I just really wanted to get that out of the way, so just in case if we do come across like a store filled to the brim with absolutely nothing, you know why. But I think we're gonna do just fine with the lack of resources, plus it, it kinda makes you think a little bit of what I actually need and what I don't. Anyways, it's only 1pm right now, so let's go pack up as much as we can so we can hit the road once again. But before I do leave, I will be grabbing this free hand axe right out of our top storage unit here. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention, we have survived 3 days, 4 hours, killing 81 zombies with it being a very cool and crisp 125 degrees Fahrenheit. I almost forgot my damn water bottle. So after I grab that, I'm gonna go pick a direction and we'll just walk and see what we find. And right now, I think the best course of action in order to loot some more supplies is gonna be following the Star Eplex up that way. I could go down all the way near the bar, but I feel like that's a lot of ground to cover without too much, uh, too much shelter, right? I am gonna be hopping from building to building, so having it nearby is going to be a very nice thing for us. But it looks like we won't need to travel too far for the next building, as there seems to be a clothing store right up ahead. With some opposition, but we can probably handle that real quickly. And if not, I can just speed run my way into the building to fight them in there. Wow, that's a lot more than I was expecting. Okay, maybe... Maybe we go around. Or instead of that, I'll move my way down over through here break a open a window in there and just window cheese the rest of these zombies. I think I'm gonna go with that one instead. Please don't be an alarm. Okay, no alarm, perfect. Let's remove the glass and get smacking. Okay, that went pretty well. I do like using buildings to my advantage because it means I can swing all willy nilly without having to worry about my repercussions. Sadly, this place seems, uh, Pretty abandoned, and I'm not sure if that's because the building is actually abandoned. Okay, no, it's actually for sale. Okay, that explains why there's literally nothing in here. Yeah, well, at the very least, it can serve as a nice little waypoint for me, for me to move from point A to point B. And it is especially nice having all of these windows to cheese some bozos with. Let's see what we got up here. We got a palm travel and a police store right up the road. Okay, not bad at all. Oh. Also, if you look really closely, I see some rain collector barrels up on the rooftop of that one building. I don't know how we're going to access it, but I will keep that in mind for later, especially if water is inside of them. For now, let's check out the palm travel and then the police station. So let's get this bread. Anyways, we don't have a lot of time to waste as the temperature is picking up back to a solid 131 degrees. Which doesn't matter when we're inside. No alarm either. Perfect. Sadly, there doesn't seem to be much in here other than a very, very clutch metalworking volume. I'm gonna need to abuse skill books as much as possible in this series, by the way, because uh, we really don't have a lot of resources. I know that's kind of obvious, but even the most obvious resource we don't have because, you know, it's a desert, so that, that means there's a lack of trees which means the only way I'm going to be getting lumber is by disassembling furniture inside buildings. You can really start to see the problem in that because, uh, yeah, lugging lumber all the way back and forth is going to be brutal. Which leads me to the next thing that I really, really want, and that is a vehicle. If we can get our hands on a vehicle, I installed a mod that allows us to cool down on the go, which would be absolutely huge. Oh, speaking about vehicle, it looks like we have ourselves an RV. Sadly, no keys, but we do have some adhesive tape, a magazine. It's also 166 degrees in there. Oh my lord, I need to get back inside this building right now. That brought up our core temperature massively. Okay, cars are kind of a death trap. Until we can turn on the cooler at least. Oh wait, that was a little scary. It's good to know though. 
Also, the trunk seems to have some empty plastic bags, a tarp, and a tote bag inside. The tote bag is actually huge. That is the first real bag that I can get my hands on right now. And I gotta say, what a hell of a fashion statement. Let's go check out the big rig and then hop into the laundromat next. Oh, we actually have a lot of stuff inside there. I'm gonna go hop out once again, cool down. Hey there, you might notice that there's a slight change in pace from what I was just dealing with minutes before, and I'll tell you exactly why. It's because I lost a pretty good chunk of the recording and that was all that was saved. So here is good old Steve. As you see, I looted the police station, and I got a very nice bag from it. Not only that, but I got a small assortment of ammo and a few guns that I dropped down on our little shelf here. We've survived for a whole four days and seven hours, and with this small little win, I also got something that is pretty huge. And no, it isn't the extra jug of water that we got from the police station water dispenser, but that does lead to something that is also pretty fun and something new that we are going to have to deal with. The water in the taps and the plumbing systems of each and every house has finally gone bad, meaning it's tainted, and if we drink it, we will get sick. So really, all the water that we can drink right now is gonna be the few jugs that I do have with pure drinking water inside. Other than that, we are going to have to start to worry about purifying it. But aside from that, we got ourselves some nice magazines, including a modded one, which I found inside a, a, a garbage can, believe it or not, and a pretty nice assortment of foods, including some broccoli and beef jerky, which I will eat right now. Anyways, it is 5.40 p.m., so we're not going to be doing anything too crazy, but in the morning, I am going to go back up to the direction of the police station to kind of fill you in on what you missed. But for the rest of the day, we will be just foraging around the area. Oh, and by the way, it got extremely more hot out. I'm pretty sure the max temperature it reached today was 136 degrees Fahrenheit, so we are reaching levels that are quite literally record-breaking. But that ain't gonna stop good old Summer Steve from foraging around the area for any bits and baubles I can get my grubby mitts on. Oh, I also lost the bandana as I was just getting way too hot and I decided that the little bit of insulation was just not worth the risk. Anyways, I will see all of you tomorrow and I will keep you updated if I find anything nice around here. Welcome to day just about five. Summer Steve has killed 141 zombies, and it's only going to go on up as we continue on down. Now, I am going to be taking the same path as, as our police station route, as there are some very good landmarks that I would love to loot in the future. But before I do leave, we're going to need to pay a small little visit all the way towards the gas station, as I need something big from there. And if you can't tell where I'm going with this, you can tell for my key ring. I found a car key, which means that we now have access to something that should help us out in a not so forgiving world. Something that gives me hope that we will be able to survive. Anyways, the one thing that we do need from here right now is some gasoline so I can start up and work on a future vehicle. Matter of fact, I'm going to grab every gas can I can right now just to fill it up while we still have power. You know, we got to take small bits of initiative like that if we are going to survive here. I, I learned the hard way, especially because I almost walked out and died from dehydration from forgetting my water bottle. It's rough out here. It really is. I mean, we've been out just for a little bit and I've already gone through half of this new water bottle. Three things of gas should be more than enough for our future vehicle, though I will only bring one with me, as I can use that small amount of fuel to drive back and fill it up straight from the source. Bingo, let's drop off these two and bring the one in our hand with us. Now that we got that, it's time to revisit that one laundromat that I was at before. Alrighty, here we are once again where I actually lost my footage. So, what I did is I followed my way all the way down to the police station, looted that boy up. I'll probably be back in there later to pick up some water, but I went through Green's Market up there. Green's Market, by the way, was completely empty and ransacked, so there's nothing up there. But I cut through ahead 
and I found a very big dorm kind of ish building up ahead, which is going to be a very cool hotspot. And not only that, but we did find some car keys to one of the vehicles up there that I want to check out right now. And in order to segue over to that topic, I'll ask you one question. What is the most dangerous part about this challenge? I would say it's the temperature. And the, the whole fact of us having to jump from house to house is extremely inefficient if we want to travel long distances. Thankfully, I've installed a mod to where car coolers are actually way more useful than they are, and we can cool down our character by getting inside and turning on the air conditioning. So, my car key goes to this vehicle here. If I were to enter this vehicle right now, it'd be a solid 132 degrees Fahrenheit. But if I add in a little bit of gas, just like this, enter this bad boy, start it up, and turn on the cooler, which I already did have on. Uh, I, I thought you'd be able to turn it on without starting the car, but I learned that was not an actual thing that you can do. But now all we got to do is let that bad boy run for like 30 minutes inside the comfort of this building in here. And hopefully we will have a very, very cool car, which we can use to drive around without having to worry about heat stroke. And now that we have given it a few seconds, let's go check it once again. Okay, it does look like we need to be actually inside of the car in order for it to cool down, so I will just sit in here for a little bit. But as you see, the temperature is rapidly decreasing to way more manageable levels. So this kind of brings me to my next thought. As long as I have gasoline and a working car, I have my lifeline. As if I get too overheated, instead of having to search for the nearest building, I can instead hop into my car and cool down that way. The only problem is that it kind of makes gasoline a very sought after resource now. But it's a damn good thing that we live right next to a gas station. So let's go drive this bad boy down and fuel it up all the way so I can bring this with me on my travels. Oh, this is this this is the small boon that we needed to do a little bit better in this challenge. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Matter of fact, we're getting too cold in here, so let's uh, let's turn the temperature back up a little bit more so we're not dying from that. But oh man, this is this is awesome. I actually have faith about this challenge now. Anyways, let's go refuel this bad boy and drive right back up to the police station first. Just like that, we have ourselves a portable cooler that also works as a means of transportation. Let's go move our way back to the police station so I can kind of retrace my steps, because as much as I do sound optimistic, I am extremely frustrated that I did lose all of that recording. <laughs> but hey, with every small fumble, we get a little bit of a treat along the way. Anyways. I should probably keep the car running the more I think about it, especially with how fast these cars can turn into ovens. Yeah, I'm going to keep that running. It'll be my little oasis. But I stepped my way inside the police station, looted my way all the way down, taking all of the water out, especially because I was able to take a big old water jug out of that water dispenser there. I then looted the armory, got myself a few guns, nothing too crazy, you know, nothing to write home about either. And then I stepped my way inside this locker room right here where I found my big hiking bag. Matter of fact, there is still a free duffel bag, a bucket hat, and another, an, and another duffel bag inside here, which I will take another one just in case. So after that, I hopped my way on out and holy hell, is it raining out? <laughs> wow, I, I, I guess I only set it to very dry in the sandbox settings. If I could have removed rainfall, I definitely would though, but that is, that is really nice. I don't see any rainfall accumulating on the ground though, so I don't know if we can actually collect water that way. Uh, can I drop a beer can on the ground and will it fill up? No, it can't. Well, that's fine. I'm sure it'll keep us cool and keep us wet anyways. So I moved my way through the police station all the way down to this green marketplace. Let's go take out the bozos and then move our way in. Anyways, I checked out the green market and as you see, there's absolutely nothing inside. And that is one of the problems I told you 
about this map being three plus around three to two years old is that some of the spawns are kind of scuffed but oh actually we do have some supplies inside of these shelves here i didn't even loot the store because of how bad the shelves looked but i'm glad i decided to check it out as we got ourselves some shotgun shells a couple of empty jars one dead zombie two bags of rice which is the the largest thing out of this for sure some chips uh it's even more shotgun shells charcoal empty jars and even more shotgun shells not bad at all 15 bullets and uh, two bags of rice that that definitely made it worth it but everything else is completely barren anyways when i was done going through here i went out into this building here now i only looted around four buildings in this place but this place seems to be like a massive apartment complex slash dorm room and it has some pretty cool stuff inside you can also see where i dropped off that one tote bag that i got but yeah i stopped around halfway through and i decided that it would be better to just go back grab some gasoline to go start up our car in the i guess supposed next episode until i lost everything so that's where we are today so now that I got you all caught up, I think it's only right that we loot and absolutely pillage the rest of this place as there's food, hopefully books and other supplies inside here, along with the occasional zombie. Let's bring up a car first though. And oh my, it is raining pretty damn hard out. That is a really nice sign to see. Yeah, you know what? I think all we need is an optimistic mindset, and also I should really check out the trunks and the glove boxes of these vehicles here. You never know if you could get anything good, and I am willing to check it out real quick. Very quickly though, because it is still 130 degrees in here. We'll be taking the twine, cigarettes, battery, unlocking the trunk before I die with some duct tape. Easy yoinks. All right, let's keep her moving to the actual apartment now. And oh my, it actually does fill up in puddles. Okay, well that is gonna be a pretty easy way to collect some water then. I mean, it's still extremely hot out, but this is a pretty massive turn for me, especially because it means that I have a reason or an excuse to wash myself off with how dirty we are. It's still very hot out, so we're gonna, you know, never not deal with that, but at the very least, we can make ourselves look a little bit more presentable, even if it's one limb at a time. But hey, we look pretty damn spiffy. Almost reminds me of how I looked at the start of the series. Hi there once again. You might be wondering why I'm in a different position yet again, and it's because I keep on messing up. I swear after <laughs> after the first time, uh, my brain has been scrambled. But I wanted to stop the recording midway through to check that everything did save, and it did, thankfully. So I decided to do what I usually do, and that's loot these upcoming apartments. Thankfully, I did notice it like a, a minute in, but there is another jump and we have gotten ourselves quite a bit of food. I've only looted the first little area, so you really didn't miss too much, but I am just beating myself up over how how beefy my brain is. But yeah, we, we got ourselves some chips, some rice from the last encounter, steak, watermelon, and if that wasn't, you know, the best, we also got ourselves another saucepan which is huge and a free cooking pot with water that spawned on top of the counter so it's not bad at all and the best thing is that we can use our new found car to lug all of this stuff back isn't that useful oh also the back of this car actually had some stuff in it not bad not bad at all let's drop off some more of the stuff and i will actually update you on what i find now a whole bottle of ketchup we also have Metalworking Volume 2, Forging Volume 5, Fishing is Useless, but I will take the Trapping Volume. We could trap birds in the future. We got a free tub of ice cream. Don't mind if I eat all of that right now. We also got an electrician book and another set of lockers with a secondary Doomsday Survivor Volume. I'm starting to find out that the lockers and trash bins are the only containers that actually have modded items in them. Other than that, it's almost only vanilla. 
which is fine by me. Holy crap, that scared the crap out of me because it just means I can make all the cool modded stuff by combining all of the vanilla parts we find in here. Also, that is a second water dispenser with around 250 units of the good stuff. That's it for the first story though, so it's right on up to the second. Another hand axe, which is actually huge as the other one on mine is about to break. Some tape, thread, a lead pipe. I'll take that over the metal pipe any day of the week. And an extra club hammer, a dead zombie, two tubs of ice cream, another lead pipe, which is better condition, some nails. What the hell? That was terrifying. I am so glad I decided to back up there. <laughs> oh, man, I thought the I thought the mannequin would have been the highlight of this, but no, it, it, it was definitely uh, the, the the clown car zombie room. Holy crap! You know, it, it's little interactions like those that really keep you alive and, and keep your blood pumping. Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. It's time to loot and get the hell out of here. It's getting extremely late and uh, spending more time here means less time I actually have to do other things. Yeah, sorry. Oh my god, there's so much in here. So many water coolers. I'm actually gonna have to make this a multi-day trip. <laughs> hey, not that I'm complaining, you know. I'll take any little bit I can get right now. Including a free crafted timer, uh, duct tape, and a gorilla radio book. Another box of nails, all the condiments, pink paint, which is a huge water collection thing, an actual fire axe. Oh my, I'm gonna have to make multiple trips, aren't I? Yep. Okay, let's go drop off this stuff here and then I'll go grab the rest. God, we're getting so much stuff. A lemon, a foraging book, an orange soda with a burger, including a pot of soup. Almost missed that. Lastly, there's a bunch of fresh produce with a few books on carpentry. This whole session was a trip for me, by the way. I should be doing better next time when I have my thoughts in a row. But hey, we're, 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 we're coming out just fine, especially now that we have a negative 31 degree car. OK, we should probably turn off the heat so I don't die of hypothermia instead of hyperthermia. The, the, it's raining hard, and I think when the rain ends in the morning, we will have a very good plan, which I think I may have. Anyways, I'm feeling pretty damn good. Peace the hell out, everyone. Looking at that stash of water coolers, I don't think we're going to need to worry about water for quite a while, including food and other materials. As you see, Summer Steve has sported a beard, which looks absolutely disgusting on him. So we are going to shave that right off. But while we do that, I can talk about how long we have survived so far. We have survived for around six days, killing 162 zombies, which means that the chopper event is gonna come along pretty soon. But really, I'm not too worried as we still got power. And more importantly, we do have an escape plan if it does hit the fan. But aside from that, I think we can kind of take things a little bit more slowly than I was doing before with my whole pack rep mentality, right? We have a lot of water and it's not even including the stuff that you can't see. And more importantly, we have a bunch of food, which if I continue supplying power is going to stay for a very long time. I mean, look at that. We got what around 50 kilos of just food and a whole other fridge to fill up. So that kind of brings me into my next little plan. I think we should future proof our house by grabbing that generator back at my spawn today. Oh, also, I need to set down my new stretcher bed. I forgot that I brought this along, so we no longer need this blue chair. We have upgraded to an actual bed or a cot. Either way, it's going to be way more comfy than what we were rocking with before. Hell yeah, this is my own little slice of heaven, and it's only going to get better from here on out. I say better with very loose terms, by the way, as it is still excruciatingly hot outside, and it's only going to get worse as the day continues to go through. But hey, that's not too much of a problem when we got our favorite vehicle here. Let's just make sure we turn on the damn heater and cooler before I get cooked alive in here. There we are. I gotta say though, as soon as you get a vehicle, this challenge becomes a lot more manageable. Uh, I hope we're gonna be able to squeeze through that small gap. I, I, I think we will, but I guess we'll see. 
No, we're good. Okay. It's just a very tight squeeze. In the future, I might want to do three tiles wide just to avoid that fate. Especially with the ever-looming threat of zombies, and if I get ruined in the middle of the fence line, it's probably going to be quits from me. But there we go. We made it through, right to our old house. And now I can go ahead and grab the only generator around the area. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. Oh, there's also zombies. Okay, this is a bit of a problem. I'll just drop it down real quick and we can dispose of these bozos the right way. There we are. Now I can finally grab this generator. Sadly, I do only have one right now, but hopefully we can get two. So I have one for the gas station and one for our actual theater base, as I need to keep the freezers running in order to make sure all the food that we have foraged so far stays good. We also have some metal sheets and supplies, which is something I will take now, especially the gas. Oh, yeah, there's actually so much gas in here. This is a very good find with lastly, there being some charcoal. Not a bad yoink. Especially because I can probably set up a grill in the future and use that instead of a normal stove, which I don't have back at my base. And lastly, I almost forgot about this, but I did leave some supplies back here when I initially left, including a bunch of water containers and a crowbar, which is honestly a pretty damn good weapon. I'll take that and I think we will finally have everything we need to leave. Yeah, there really wasn't much left here. So let's get all the way back home to drop things off and then I'll tell you about my next plan after. Actually, it's kind of late already. I think I might stay here for a little bit longer and just do foraging so I can go check out some of the other stuff next time. Yeah, I really don't want to play things super late in this challenge. And we are extremely close to foraging level four, so let's do a little bit of foraging. Why the hell not? I'll keep you updated on what I find, which includes... A stone, some chopsticks, which brings me to level four foraging. Not bad, not bad at all. We have not found any food stuff yet, which is pretty sad, but we'll be picking up on that very soon. It's, it's really just been a lot of stones, but I do have the feeling that foraging is going to be Summer Steve's saving grace when everything starts to get a little more rare, as we have the chance to find anything. It's all a big gamble and I am all for it. I guess we could also go check out some of these train carts here. I kind of neglected them at the start, and there might be some supplies inside that I'll like, which is actually pretty useful. <laughs> in any other run, I would say these lumber piles are absolutely useless, but in this run, this lumber's gonna be some good stuff. Because, you know, the whole lack of trees and everything, so I'll take this actually right now. I think this is going to be a pretty good thing to invest in. Let's go back to up to the zombies that we all murdered, get a bunch of sheet ropes so I can collect these into piles, load them into the car, and I will count that as a successful looting run. Starting with the clothing, moving on down with our adequately cooled vehicle, a solid 30 degrees, just so I can stack up these logs into much more manageable piles. Not bad. Let's keep that up for these next few piles here. I'll go check out some of these other train carts to see if they're dealing with the same things, but we already have six whole logs to work with. It's also gotten extremely hotter out. It's a solid 128, so I do need to take breaks very often, but we will make it work regardless. Oh, this is such a good plan. I'm so freaking smart. And once we have all this wood, we won't, we won't need to worry about disassembling stuff for too long up until I need to actually grind out my carpentry skills. Anyways, let's go check out some more of these train carts to see if there's any other wood ones like it. Which there is. Oh, we are eating so good today. Oh, and not only that, I forgot that our little spawn area did have these rain collector barrels. I sadly cannot pick them up just yet. I guess I can, actually. So you know what, let's go fill up any containers we can with this water to see if I can grab myself a rain collector barrel. It's a pretty low chance of succeeding, but one barrel's gonna be better than zero up at my movie theater base, so I'm gonna risk it. So long as I remembered to pack the hammer with me. Sadly, I did forget to pack my hammer, so the only way we're gonna be able to get those water collectors right now 
is through a little bit of a weird process and that's going to be making an actual hammer and that requires me foraging for a single tree branch. It shouldn't be that hard so let's look around the area a little bit to see if I can make my dreams come true. Because we do have stones which is one of the main components of a stone hammer. All I need is a stone, some ripped sheets, and a tree branch. I'll look around for a little bit, but if I can't find anything, I'll call it a healthy loss and I'll just come back for them later. Yeah, you know what? I can always come back. It's not going anywhere. Instead, I'll just fill up my last seat with some logs. There we are. So I think it's time we head on back and drop off all of our wood. I can't wait to see what it looks like in an actual pile. It's going to be pretty damn cool. I will see you all then. Bop, 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 bop. And here is where I would have done a last bop, but I'm looking at the drop model for this charcoal and it is the most pitiful thing I've ever seen. It looks like rat droppings, yet the actual thing itself weighs 8 kilos and is a massive bag. It is, um, it's really funny how tiny this thing is with how heavy it is. I guess I'll just, I'll drop it in the corner, it, it, it adds ambience i guess but yeah we got ourselves a very nice timber pile i'll probably be back to the train carts for more we have so much freaking water some gasoline and now we got our generator in the front so i gotta say we're doing pretty damn good for ourselves also i will be grabbing this mossberg and nightstick from this dead police zombie including all of those uh actually i don't have any use for the maggots but the zombie corpses are starting to uh fester them so that's that's awesome. Tomorrow, I think we are going to go check out some more of the buildings that a ways, though. We've we've done a lot of exploring up there, so I want to see what's on the opposite side of our movie theater. Oh, I also forgot to almost drop this thing off right here. There we are. That gives us how many? 18 logs in total. And I think that has definitely earned a very nice treat, which is actually an entire bag of chips. Still not licious. I'll have some ice cream as well. That should set us over. Now it's time to sleep. And sleep we shall. Welcome to day seven, everyone. We have finally survived our first week and we are going to survive for so much more longer now that we have all these supplies. The one thing that I will take before I go out on my little mission is an actual hammer and screwdriver combo so I can, you know, disassemble stuff on the way. There we are. I would say the things that I'm really looking out for right now is a welder mask so I can actually get started in creating some really cool stuff. Especially if I want to get a little bit silly making stuff like salvaged shivs and scrap blades. I'm gonna need a few more supplies is what I'm trying to say. I mean, we can create a few things like an improvised flashlight silencer, which is something that I I will take, actually. At least we have a massive obtrusive silencer on this little 38 dinky revolver. I don't know how that exactly works, but it but it just does. Enough questioning. It's about time we get moving. It's actually really nice out right now. Uh, only 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Holy crap, I might not even need to power up my car for this one. I'm kidding. It gets extremely bad in the cars regardless. That's why we got the cooler. So, what do we got down this way? Some homes, very large homes. Okay, not the worst. I was kind of expecting a little bit more, but I guess we can peruse some of these areas. Yeah, there's not too many zombies. And if you think about it, homes might have exactly what I need. All I gotta do is check them out. Also, I need to keep this car running or else it'll turn into an oven so quickly. I always forget how fast that kind of stuff ramps up. Anyways, what do we got inside? Other than a couple of bozos that need to be taught a lesson. Thanks for the revolver, ma'am. We have ourselves, oh, it's already looking good in here. These little back rooms are some of the best spots for loot. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm feeling it today. We got a garden saws, a lighter, even more gas cans, barbed wire, rope, metal sheets, and welding rods. I will probably need all of this, including the extra propane torches. I know I already have one, but having more than one gives you more fuel to work with. Inside the fridge, we have an entire egg carton that'll that'll keep me fed for an actual week. A rotten bowl of stew, which I'll use as a container. So many books in here. I'm going to take as much as I can 
as there is going to be a point in this challenge to where all I can do is read indoors. So yeah, all of this is going to be easy yoinks, even if I will never read it in my lifetime. The one thing that I would really like in terms of literature is a actually a television. It's only day seven right now. I think there might be some programs still running. And if that's the case, I'm going to need to watch this as soon as I get home so I can absorb as much knowledge as possible. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave it out here when I'm done looting because I think there will be a scheduled program at 9 a.m. I kind of forgot that there are going to be no VHS tapes in this run, so getting as much knowledge with these as possible would be nice. But let's see what we got upstairs. We got some water that I will always love to siphon, a couple more books, a couple of garbage bags, and that's it. The only thing that I will take other than that are these nice little plants here because I think they would look pretty cool at my base. Just because the world has ended doesn't mean Summer Steve can't live large for a little bit. Is there any programs today? I would really like it if there were. No, there's not any, but the television is still really cool to take with me, so I'll just take it. Okay, let's go load it in the back and continue searching some of the other homes. Oh, it does look like there's going to be a little bit of opposition, though. No problems. Especially now, because we got the cooler car. <laughs> which is currently a very cool 70 degrees room temperature inside. Oh, I, I, I absolutely love having this thing around. You're going to be my new best friend. I think we should give the car a name in the future just because of how important it is to my life. I'm going to I'm never going to leave home without you, baby. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's definitely a mutualism type of symbiosis because I give the car fuel and in return, the car cools me down. So as long as I stay alive, this car stays running, and so as long as this car stays running, I stay alive. It's as simple as that. Okay, on to the next house, though. Which is already looking stylish as hell. As we have ourselves a basic fork spoon and some canned corn, a singular banana, which I will eat right now, and lastly, a couple more cans of food with a bowl of rotten soup. Ooh, and if that wasn't tantalizing enough, we have ourselves a small little party. A very sad party, but a party that will keep us alive, filled with red solo cups and brewskis up the wazoo. Hmm. Awfully weird sink placement, but I won't question it. <laughs> Next house. We got a rolling pin and some canned food, a free carton of milk, a steak, Metalworking mags with another very sad party. Oh, this is this is such a good look. All those empty bottles are going to be filled up with water as well. Man, I got to say, I think we're going to get some more loot just just from the events that happen inside of these homes alone. I haven't been getting much out of the containers themselves, but uh, it's a different story for the stuff on top of the counters. That is going to be it here, though. Off to the next house. Oh, actually, those are some really good medical supplies. And I think we ought to go check out the one with a shack first. Ah, oh, damn it, the door's locked. Well, it's a good thing I got the hand axe. <laughs> Which seems to be the right call. Already we have gotten ourselves so many supplies, including metal bars, which I could do very fun things with. Plaster powder, which is useless. Another flashlight, actually pretty huge, especially because I, I turned my old one into a suppressor, and lastly, nails. We also got some antibiotics inside of the bathroom. A Freddy the Fox plushie? Oh, you're going to be my best friend. Some padded pants, which would be really funny to wear in this challenge. I would actually turn myself into an oven if I did decide to wear padded clothing. And lastly, we got ourselves another engineer spawn. I will continue to take the twine and scrap metal. That is huge. And who knows? We might even make ourselves a cool little pipe bomb in the future. Okay. I do think after we loot one more house, though, I'm going to call it quits for today, as we have been pushing pretty far into some uncharted territory. And it's good to know that this area down here is more of a residential spot, which means as soon as I run out of wood out of the train cars, I can go down to these homes here and disassemble the beds and furniture for supplies. And that is a chopper event. Okay, that is, um, that is one hell of a timing for it. Well, it looks like we're gonna go drive out in the middle of nowhere to make sure that the zombies don't get brought to my location. Oh, I'm, I'm glad I got the car beforehand then.
Let's drive through the little break in our fence line, go out in the middle of nowhere. Actually, I'm gonna drive down this way a, a very long distance, and I think we'll, uh, we'll just chill a little bit out here. I am pretty sad that we do need to call it quits before I could loot that last house, but it's good that it hits now than if it hit when I was sleeping, you know? And while I'm at it, I might as well go loot around and forge to see what I can find out here. <laughs> There's really nothing else to do right now. If any zombies come up, I can always take the car and escape really speedily. And it does look like the opposition has finally arrived. Is it just him or are they bringing in a full squad? Okay, it looks to be just him. I guess that's another benefit of living in the middle of nowhere. There's not a lot of zombies to harass you. Yeah, we'll just wait in our car for a bit. They are bringing in some zombies though. So I am probably gonna need to clear out some in front of my, uh, my movie theater. But hopefully this guy doesn't stick around for too much longer. Okie dokie, it's 5.40 p.m. and I think the chopper event has finally passed, which means I have the green light to get all the way back to my base. I'm hoping that it didn't bring too many zombies in from the top area, but your guess is as good as mine at this point. And it looks like they didn't. Bless this beautiful game. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here. We got a whole bunch of supplies, including food, water, everything really. And I finally future-proofed my house a little bit to prepare for when the electricity goes out. I think next episode, we're gonna do a lot more scouting in the town to see if there's any points of interest that I may or may not enjoy. And once I do, you know, once I, and once I do mark them out, I can go ahead and set up looting runs to go loot them. I also really want to make a few weapons that might be a little bit more suited in this hot heat environment, but we'll see what we can make in the future. I can't believe we have already survived one whole week. Welcome to the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge, and right now, I think I kind of want to spruce up the base a little bit, as I did grab some nice furniture pieces that will add a little bit more color and life into this place. So let's go move this soda machine in favor of a television. Bada bam. Drop down this nice painting there. Add in a couple of nice plants. And lastly, drop off my little Freddy Fox plushie. This little guy has been in so many of my challenge runs at this point and I keep on getting him. He's just a little guy and he'll do perfect right on my bed. Yeah, you know what? This place is slowly starting to look more like a home, other than the very oddly placed soda machine, but I'll find a place for it soon. This is uh, also temporary as I do want to move into the back one of these times, but in order to do that, I need to build up some skills. Now, I did say that last episode I was gonna go scout out some of the town a little bit more, but I'll be real with you, we have so many supplies, I don't think we need to worry about that, like, at all. So instead today, I think we're gonna go back to the residential area right up that way, and we're gonna go work on some skills. But in order to do that, we need to read up on some knowledge first. Which includes all of my magazines and every single volume one book that matters, such as mechanics, electrician, and lastly, trapping. Those are the only ones that I can read right now. The rest are out of my skill reach. So what I'm trying to say is that today is gonna be pretty damn boring, but at least I have a friend to accompany me on the way and some food that I can really help myself towards. Oh, and I will say that the temperatures have gotten a lot more manageable. I guess I will see all of you tomorrow, as we have a lot of literature to go through. At the very least, I won't need to worry about the chopper event ruining my plans anytime soon. It's gonna be a pretty good day, I feel. I truly do feel safe inside here. My brain is growing exponentially. Being inside rules, especially when you don't get baked by the very extreme sun. Okay, I may have lied just a little bit, as I did kind of forget that Trash is a slow reader. 
which means that I was only able to read one book and that was Electrician Volume 1, which is all that I really need right now as I don't have any good carpentry volumes and the only thing that I want to build up right now is my electrical skill so I can hotwire in the future. It's 6.20 a.m. with us surviving almost nine whole days, so yeah, I think it's about time we get going with the disassembly process. Hopefully the chopper event didn't move around to too many zombies, so this is a little bit easier on me. It is only 102 degrees out, so this is very manageable compared to everything else that I was dealing with before. And it does look like there are a few little clusters of zombies that I'll need to take care of. Thankfully, the crowbar handles them just fine. Cool. It does look like that's going to be all the zombies here, so you know what time it is. Thankfully, I did remember to pack my saw, my hammer, and my screwdriver, so this should go pretty nicely. The only thing that I did forget to pack with me was my damn food. I always forget something. At least it isn't water. Anyways, it's about high time we cook. Let's get this bread. Hey! Okay, that was a lot quicker than I actually expected. We already got to carpentry level two, which was my goal. So the only thing that I really want right now is to bump up my electrical levels, which might take a little bit longer, but there is a very good reason on why I do want to build up my skills right about now. And that is because I need a way of killing zombies that doesn't make my character exhausted and or any more warm than I need to be. And having two levels in carpentry just so happens to be the limit for that, as I want to make myself a bow and arrow. So how about we continue to disassemble homes up until I can reach level three carpentry and maybe level one in electrical, but that's probably a pipe dream. There we are, a total of nine planks and 13 nails. Well, not the best, it is definitely a start. On to the next house, which seems to be three stories. I did not know that there was an attic. I'll have to see if I can actually move up there. Hell yeah. Okay, that was extremely easy to get to level three carpentry. Much easier than I was expecting, but I guess it also helps that Summer Steve is handy. So let's go finish up the rest of this house, and I think we'll pack up and get back to our base. Also, little update on the whole attic that I saw. There is no staircase in here that could possibly lead up to it, which is pretty sad, but it would be an extremely cool base so long as a zombie doesn't, you know, rip down the sheet rope. Other than that, though, I am pretty excited to see how many things we can craft up with what little supplies we have. Man, I was not expecting to reach carpentry level three that quick. I was I was planning on disassembling the entire block like the nematodes. But alas, that'll wait for another day. One thing that I am a little bit worried about grinding for, though, is electrical. It's it's going to be brutal. So any zombies that we come across with dig digital watches, I am going to need to pounce and take as much as I can from them. Including this chuckle nut right here. Thanks for the watch, bozo. Can you give me a couple more like that? That'd be great. That is sadly a no for digital watches. I also had to drop off my planks and start up the car outside because when I entered, it was a solid 150 degrees. It's still a solid 142. I'm going to turn the AC on max and we're going to give that a little bit and I'll just pile up the planks right outside. I really don't want to get boiled alive inside my my baby. Aside from that, I am pretty curious to see how many planks we're going to be getting out of this and how much we can actually do with it. I don't think we're going to need to worry about lumber that much, really. But it is good to keep a conservative mindset in the apocalypse, so, you know, better safe than sorry. But we got ourselves around 16 planks and 16 nails out of that. How's the inside of the car looking? Oh, so much better. A, a very crisp and cool 60 degrees Fahrenheit. That's what I love to see. Now I can lug in the planks without worrying about a sudden death. There we are. We got our entire trunk filled and all of our seats filled to the brim with planks. Let's bring them back and drop them right next to our log lumber pile. Also, I got to say, this car is extremely nice for gas mileage. I've been I've been running this thing like nonstop and it is just chugged through just fine. And I love this car for that. 
Though I will say this just to set the precedent, if I find a very cool sports car that's Mad Max style, I am gonna leave this thing in the dust. But for now, it's good ol' reliable. There we are. And the more I'm looking at this massive pile of unorganized planks, the more I'm starting to realize I need more storage options. So how about we use this pile to go ahead and create a crate so it doesn't look as obtrusive. There we are. It's not the best crate, but it sure is a lot better than just seeing all of these planks out and about, you know, in the open. I say as there's still nine whole planks to move, but it's a lot better than what we were dealing with before, and I can stack them on top of the crate to look a little bit more, uh, streamlined? Yeah. There we are, that looks so much better. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. Up next, I think we should go grab some damn food. And by food, I mean an entire bottle of red wine, because why the hell not, I've earned it and it's pretty laid out. True mana from the gods. And with this, I think we can finally get started with our big project. And that's going to be creating a bow. Now it is 11 p.m., so I'm going to save this for tomorrow. But one thing I can get started with is making a bow string for the morning. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, let's go get some sleep and you already know what I'm going to be doing by the time I wake up. Good night, Furbert. I love you. Anyways, it's about time good ol' Summer Steve here creates the bow. Now the one thing that I do know is that creating this bow is probably gonna be a full day procedure. If I remember anything from the Iron Man series with Grug, it's gonna take a while, but it should be worth it. So we'll have Steve carve away at his magnum opus so we can have a means of fighting the undead without swinging around a weapon. That's the main reason why I do want one is because using a bow is a lot less heat accumulating. That's what I'll call it. So it should save me a little bit of temperature when I do go ahead and scout in the city. It's going to take a long time, though. And by a long time, I mean right now. What did I say? <laughs> With editing, anything can be done in an instant. The only thing that is lost is Summer Steve's time and his limited lifespan. But now that we have an unstrung bow, we can go ahead and string this bad boy, creating a bow and arrow. Check it out. It's not the best, but it sure as hell will do the job. Now I need some arrows. Thankfully, I did grab my club hammer from before, and I was collecting some chipped stones along the way with scrap metal. With all of these and a little bit of duct tape, we should be able to make the arrows. Oh, also the planks that we did have. So let's go craft up some sturdy sticks. Cutting out some fletchings, more importantly, huge fletchings, because it reduces the range, but it increases the accuracy of the arrows. Awesome. That gives us 16 fletchings and 16 sturdy sticks. We can go ahead and make some flint arrowheads out of these chipped stones here, with the remaining scrap metal being turned into normal good old ironhead arrows. Oh yeah, would you look at this thing. This should definitely help us out on our nice little journey, and it doesn't cost any stamina to use. I don't have a lot of arrows, so I do need to, you know, collect them. But hey, I would say that's a huge improvement to what we were dealing with before. Now that we got that out of the way, I think we can do a little bit of scouting ahead. It is only 2 p.m., so after I go grab myself some food, preferably a nice steak, cooked in the pit of hell, otherwise known as my microwave, <laughs> I think we'll be ready to go. Oh, and it does look like we're going to be able to create some more chipped stones out of here, so that means a couple more arrows for your boy Summer Steve. Let's go nap out a couple, check my steak, which is very far from being done, and create two more arrows. Now, I don't know if the flint ones are going to be as good as the metal ones, but I guess we'll go figure that out together. Now that we got all that, I can go drop off all the tools that I won't be using today back into their respective containers. Which includes the crowbar. I don't really need it as I already do have my hand axe, which is a very good melee weapon in and of itself. Okay, not bad. How's that steak looking? About three quarters of the way there. Okay, let's wait for this bad boy to cook up. Bada bam, eat half of it now, put it in my inventory for later. Oh, I am so ready to kill some zombies. Heart boxers and bow included. 
So, I'm gonna go scout up ahead. I mean, we've already gotten everything that we could ever want, and I really want to see if I can find any decent points of interest. Right now, my main targets are gas stations, libraries, and schools, mainly for the knowledge and recipes slash books. It's also 150 degrees inside here right now, so let's go start up the car and let it cool down a little bit before I go out on that trip. But yeah, I'm really looking out for books, especially carpentry books, because I don't want to disassemble all of the limited supplies that we do have here without having as much of an XP bonus as I can get so I can be efficient with my resources. I guess for now I can just shoot at the corner here so I can build up my bow shooting abilities because the cool thing about this archery mod is that you actually don't need to shoot zombies in order to gain skill. So if I continue to do this and to pick up my arrows afterwards, I should be able to reach a decent level. The only problem is that it's actually going to take eons to get there. From seven shots at the wall, we have gained a total of five XP. Round it up. <laughs> So yeah, it's going to be a very long-term thing, and uh, Trash is going to be beans at it for a while. Let's go see that car, which is still at 141 degrees. Oh my gosh, turn that up to the max. I'll leave that cooking for a little bit while longer, which means one more volley of arrows. We're already up to eight whole XP. Oh man. And it does look like our car is in a manageable temperature. 100 degrees is not bad at all. I would say the danger zone is 120. If it reaches that point, um, yeah, it's probably not going to be a uh, good life. Aside from that, though, it's about time for us to go look around the town for any cool buildings. We're not going to stick around for too long as there are a bunch of zombies and driving in the middle just to loot something is a very bad idea. But, but it looks like we got ourselves a small store up there. A fire station slash mechanics place up there. A guns and ammo store that is also boarded up. Ooh, okay, okay. A construction lot, two construction lots with a bunch of zombies nearby. An insurance place. There are also a lot more zombies up around this area. There's a church. A doctor's clinic with a water dispenser down there. Okay, not bad. There's also a sports car with a van. They both look mint condition. I'll go check that out later. Now, there was a swimming pool here, but um, yeah, the swimming pool is pretty dried up, so there's no way to actually get infinite water other than to pray for the <laughs> for the rain. Down here, it looks like we have the mayor's house slash office. OK, not bad. Let's go drive up and through which includes a fairly large building. I don't know what it is, though, nor the, do I really care right now because of the amount of zombies nearby. We'll just drive up and around through that. See you bozos later. And here is the downtown area, it seems. There's a whole bunch of stores nearby. I don't know what they are as they aren't labeled, and I don't even know if they have supplies in them. There does seem to be an electronics store. That's really all I can point out right now, but this does seem like a really good spot to get some vehicle loot. And oh, there's also a clothing store right up there. Not bad, not bad. There's another parking lot. Okay. Ooh, and a junkyard down there. Lastly, there seems to be a few more construction areas. Is that a warehouse I see? Ooh, yes it is. Some apartments, which should have a bunch of food stuff in them. There is a highway down there with a massive congested load right now. Another gas station, actually pretty damn huge. And a Gigamart with a sports car in the front. Okay, no, we have some really good spots. And hell, there's even a Twiggy's right next to it. Um, I think that's gonna be it for this place here though. There is a survivor home up that way. Oh my God, it's a hundred, it's negative 116 degrees in here right now. Holy crap, turn it on. Oh my God, I didn't realize how cold it was. Oh, oh, I got too distracted. Also, that is, um, that is quite literally the void up there. So you know that this entire map is limited. Oh my God, how bad was it? Okay, I, I thankfully caught it before it got any worse So, Oh my Lord, turn up the heater a little bit more. 
I almost froze myself to death. Oh, that would have been a stupid way to go out, but there's some trailers up here. Overall, the main things that I do care about is the, um, <laughs> is the gun store, maybe the mayor's office for some buildings, and all of the parking lots with clothes, uh, with, with cars that I can loot. Those are pretty cool as well. Not too many zombies in the area. I think if we take our time, we'll be <clears throat> just okay with it. Anyways, I think it's about time I head back and I go rest up. Oh, it does look like there's a second story. Oh, is that a hardware store as well? Okay, there's actually some really good spots up here. So you know what? I think we ought to go check out the gun store and more importantly, this downtown area, especially with that hardware looking spot. There's also a warehouse up here with some water collectors on top. I would love to take that with me. Yeah, overall, not bad at all. Despite this town being small, it sure does have some good spots, and we are finally warming up from our hypothermic mood. Oh man, I got a little taste of the, the, the cryogenic winter challenge with that one. I am so thankful I didn't die from that. Anyways, I think I'm gonna go ahead and end the episode here. It's a little bit of a shorter episode, but I think with the new bow and arrow that we have and the supplies that we are, you know, taking with me, I think we're going to be able to do some great things within this town. I'm probably going to read for the rest of the day. It is a solid 121 degrees. One of the only times I am thankful that it is warm out. And I will see you all next time. Peace the hell out, everyone. Ah, nothing quite like reading a book in the safety of my own home. It's peaceful and comforting, but it's also boring, so we're gonna stop here. Anyways, welcome back to the Pyrogenic Winter Summer. I kinda dropped the ball on that one, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> As we have survived our 10th day going on our 11th and the power is still kicking. It's 7.30 AM and I have a new weapon, so I think it's about high time we get back out there and we get looting. And when I mean looting, I mean we're gonna go hit up the gun store and any other adjacent store next to it. Really, I want guns and books. We got books, but it's not enough, damn it. I also just got done reading around a third of this new foraging book, so we are gonna need to finish that when we get back. It's also a solid 107 degrees out. I think this is the best this challenge has ever been in terms of temperature. I'm kind of vibing in it, you know? Up until I enter the car and it bumps up to 130, but I can change that just by starting this bad boy up and driving down. One last thing that I do need before I forget it is a welder mask, though I don't think we're gonna get that in this run right now. Anyways, we're just gonna drive down a little bit, take a left, and then bank it down to the gun store which is quite literally right here. That was a solid one minute drive, and now we can test out our new weapon. I hope you're ready for a... Okay, I, I whiffed that one completely. I, I mean, I guess we can use melee for a little bit here, and then I'll switch over to the bow. <laughs> there we are. Now that we have one zombie left, I can actually go try to see if I can hit my shots with this bow. So prepare for, oh my gosh, the reload time on this is, is, is something else. Okay, Summer Steve is gonna load this bow. There it is, prepare for trouble. Yeah, <laughs> uh, could you give me another 30 seconds, ma'am, while I load this one up? Thank you, hell yeah. As you see, it's pretty balanced because Summer Steve is a bumbling idiot when it comes to being a good shot and or a fast shot. But with all of the zombies taken care of, it's up to the guns and ammo store. And then I think after that, we're just going to go down the street and loot every other building on the way. So far, though, I really like this bow and arrow. And the way we're going to be getting it to this gun store is through a simple trick that I call a hammer. Because this is only boarded up, which means that I'm going to be able to enter it just by unbarricading it. Oh, and is that a survivor zombie? Well, hello there, sir. And you know what? I'm feeling kind of in a bandit mood. Give me that bandana right now. We're not really warm, and now I look way more intimidating. Almost like an old west bandito. But let's just get ourselves inside before I drive myself insane with my ramblings. Small little update. It looks like the barricades are double-sided. 
That complicates things, but all I can do is just pull out my axe and, uh, we'll get it done that way. But first, I need to cool down inside of my car so I don't get overheated swinging this axe around all the time. And with it being a negative 36 degrees, that should be pretty easy. <laughs> oh. I wonder how Summer Steve's body is handling this because I'm being hit with just two massive walls of temperature. One that is extremely cold, and one that is extremely hot. Which one will win? Who knows? Anyways, I'm getting inside right now. Oh, I absolutely love the hand axe. One of the best tools to have, because one, it's a melee weapon, and two, you can easily use it to get inside any building that isn't reinforced with the armored walls. So, what do we got inside this place? Oh my, the, the shelves are looking stocked as well. We got some military camo shirts and clothing. A peaked army cap with a US Army walkie-talkie. I'll dismantle that, and do you think I should wear the cap? No, absolutely not. I look like the goofiest goober. Give me like a normal cowboy hat and I think I'll be happy. I've gotten so far into the series to where I think we can, just, you know, we can manage with a little bit of clothing now. Let's see. Oh, OK, there it is. Military backpack and a hunting knife. Well, that just made this entire trip worth it. Ah, feels good when you're a winner. Let's go drop off our stupid poopy hiking bag and get in with the new and improved military bag here. But it's not even over yet, as we have the entire back area to go check out and loot. There are some boonie hats with a nice tent kit, a lot of gas masks, and an Air Force helmet, which would replace my mask so I won't be taking it, plus it's, you know, extremely heavy. And here we got a whole bunch of ammo and weaponry. Give me everything you got. Which in the front area of this place includes three boxes of 223, one box of 308, two boxes of 38, five boxes of 44, two boxes of 45, three boxes of 12, and four boxes of 9 mil, including two axes, one Mossberg 500, one Ruger M77, and one M36 revolver. There also is some more shotguns actually within these shelves. I just don't really want to take duplicates right now. And to top it all off, we got a couple extra radios in here that I can easily get some electronic XP with. Oh, it was so worth coming to this place, and we haven't even gotten to the good side. Hopefully. Oh, oh, oh yeah, we got a free machete. Another large backpack, okay. This makes our hiking bag completely obsolete. A tent kit, another Air Force helmet, and in here we got even more ammo. Oh, what a fantastic day it is. I'll drop off all the ammo and then we can go check out the next store soon. And by soon, I mean right now. Hello, goodbye. Anyways, we made it over. And so far, it looks pretty damn empty. I'm gonna be a big fan of this bow. I think as soon as we start to get our skills in with this thing and really grind it out, we are gonna be unstoppable. So are the doors unlocked? No, they're not. Does that matter for me? Not at all. So far, there's absolutely nothing other than a, <laughs> a freaking double barrel shotgun out of the, uh, out of thin air. I'll take a, I'll take a shotgun. If that's all we get out of this place, you know, at least we can leave with something. And in the back room, we have, oh my, so many magazines. I will only take the ones I haven't read. But this is a pretty good find, especially stuff like Carpentry Volume 2. That's the kind of literature I need in my life. Oh, hell yeah. But it's looking like a bunch of leisure literature, which is something that I already have. But hey, I mean, another Carpentry Volume, I'll take it. Really sad about there only being one carpentry volume that's actually useful to me, but I might have a better chance in the next building. It's also bumped up to 120 degrees out, so yeah, gotta keep an eye on my temperatures now. Anyways, it's up to the mechanic store, which already has a generator inside. Oh, that is such a good sign. Also, I whiffed that completely. I am so sorry for putting you through that, sir. If you could get on the ground so I could try again, that would be fantastic. Thank you a lot. I appreciate the wait. Oh, hell yeah. I'm liking this bow and arrow. It's quiet, but it's also deadly. Plus, we don't need to swing it around like an absolute madman, meaning we won't get overheated anytime soon. How many more zombies are in here now? Three more. Not a problem. 
That's exactly what I thought, ya bozo. Give me back my arrows and I will also be dismantling your communication lines. Now I did lose one arrow that I'm gonna need to grab later behind a table. It's up there in the wall, but I'll grab that soon. But let's see what we're cooking with inside, which includes an extra radio, a free thing of gas. Do you think I could fuel up the generator before picking it up? I kind of want to try that out now. And I'll might as well shut the doors here so we don't get, you know, interrupted while I am doing this. There we are. Let's see if I can pick it up. Oh, I totally can. So that's another way of taking fuel with me without being too over encumbered. Okay. Let's go search around a little bit more before I grab that, though. That's also so huge because I can put that in my gas station so I can have two separate generators, one for home and one for fuel related purposes. We got cigarettes, some welding rods and a metal pipe, an entire propane tank actually so huge for me. Another propane torch, sadly no propane mask, though I will take the charcoal, the hunter magazine, and that seems to be it here is what I would say if there wasn't an entire break room with an extra water dispenser and a front desk area with a second water dispenser. Okay, wow, this this has been one of the most useful trips I've ever been on, like for real this time. Because not only do we have an extra generator and all of that uh, propane, but we got two extra water jugs with water. Granted, they're not that filled, but it's still better than nothing. Alrighty, let's go load this junk up. And I think we're gonna do that by driving our car indoors and camping into here for the night, right? This is a pretty good spot. I'm a big fan of it. And I think we can just continue looting when we wake up in the morning. The only real problem is this door, which is currently busted down, but I can solve that real quickly. Bop. Bop. Nothing a couple of tables can't handle. Plus it gives me access to one of my lost arrows. Okay. Now I think I can probably go get some sleep and I will see all of you in the morning so I can continue my funky little plans. It's real crazy to think that we have already survived 12 days with nothing less than back pain or neck pain, sorry. Steve is pretty hungry and thirsty, but I can solve that with two easy drinks of soda. Now that we got that soda in us, we are going to take some pills and continue our little looting journey. Now you might be asking, why didn't I sleep within the car? Well, I just figured out that if you go inside a car, even if it's indoors, it still gets really freaking hot. So if I were to enter, it's 128 degrees inside right now, which is not that good for my body. So we're going to start this, cool it up a bit, and then move our way back on out, looting some more of the cool spots down the road. Ah, well, might as well move right now. It is 125 in here, but as long as I don't stick around for too long inside, it can't be too bad and just like that we're already at our new spot with a couple of zombies to provide it a little bit of resistance <laughs> i lied it was very easy to kill it so what kind of building are we dealing with in here there are a couple of dead skeletons it seems to be a fire station that's my hope anyways but we shall see very quickly we, we have a whole five nails so far a bag of plaster powder, a whole bunch of supplies. Okay, this is the kind of stuff I'm looking out for, including the metal sheets, the scrap metal, all of that good stuff is getting in my inventory today. Not only that, but we have a hand axe, a wood axe. So this is definitely supporting my theory that this place is a fire station, but where's the real cool loot? And by cool loot, I did not mean a diving mask, but it might be pretty funny to wear. I don't know why I installed the, uh, this mod when there's no boats and no water, but I just found it really funny. <laughs> uh, I won't be wearing the diving mask as funny as it is, though. Actually, I might. It doesn't have any insulation and it gives me a pretty goofy look. Wait, including the life buoy? Oh, it doesn't show up. That is so sad. I thought we were gonna go. I thought we were gonna go full goofy mode, but I guess not. What else do we got in here? A porta disc, a wasteland warrior for spears, and some basic supplies like a shovel, a mechanic volume, and that's about it, really. I'll take the pipe wrench because you can use that for plumbing in game. Anything in here? Ooh, that there is. 
We got ourselves some headphones. Another Wasteland Warrior volume. I feel like lockers are going to be the only way I can get modded recipes. So I am going to need to keep my eyes out for that. And in the fridge, we have some stale bread, coffee, and a cupcake. Overall, not the worst. I, I mean, it could have been better, but it could have definitely been worst as well. Oh, never mind. We got a freaking cake slice out of that. Okay, that makes it all worth it. And you know what? I'm not really vibing with the diving mask. I think we just go for the bandana and the cowboy hat combo as soon as I get one of those. I will be keeping it for a keepsake, though. But it's off to the construction site for me. And by construction site, I mean there's going to be literally nothing here. <laughs> I thought it was a lot more expansive than this. But I guess we do have an extra water cooler indoors, which is something I will always take. Yeah, you know what? I guess I can just go check out this office up here instead of just going home with a loss. Plus, there are a couple of garbage cans near the back there that I really do want to check out. Let's just keep an eye on our temperatures so we aren't biting off more than we can chew and I can dispose of these zombies very stylishly with the bow and arrow. Is what I would say if Steve could actually hit his damn shots. Oh, buddy, you are whiffing so hard right now. <laughs> Come on, man, it's just two zombies. There we are. We were able to finally handle it. I am not sure where that last arrow went, but I'm sure we'll find it soon. I can't wait till Steve gets better at shooting this damn thing. Anyways, we got a couple more bozos to take care of. There we are. They never stood a damn chance. Now let's go ahead and check out some of these dumpsters for a free wasteland warrior and a garbage bag. That's what I'm mainly looking out for right now is because I really want to build up a bunch of rain collectors so when it does rain next time, I won't make it go to waste. Yeah, is there anything inside here in terms of offices? Not really. I guess I'll just smash open the window and go check it out then. Pardon me. All right, let's do this clean. We clear out the office complex first, and then we can loot after. Thanks for the key and those shoes. Also, those watches are huge. Awesome. I can say that this office building has been cleared. It follows a pretty standard protocol and we have a couple of rain collector barrels out here. I can't drink the water because it is tainted, but I sure as hell can wash myself off pour out the water, and see if I can grab any of these for my base. It feels so nice to be able to clean myself, man. Looking good now, Summer Steve. Let's go pour all this water out so I can bring it home. Hopefully we get at least one. I'm willing to lose one after, though. Okay, I guess this game just hates me. <laughs> we didn't get any. That was a complete waste. Ah, uh, but... At the very least, this place does have a lot of water coolers, so we got that going for us. I think we've earned ourselves a cake slice, but yeah, as you see, there are a bunch of water dispensers, so much so that I won't be able to bring them with me. So I'm just going to have to remember that this place has a lot of those. Anyways, it's time to go loot this place from the top down, which we have a pen, a whole bunch of offices with a whole lot of nothing. Other than that really cute cactus. Three more bags of chips, including an extra pop, a box of nails, a garbage bag, two garbage bags and some pliers. Actually so freaking huge. I need to check those more often. A few more pretty desk plants that I can place wherever I want. A couple of baseball caps, pants, another shotgun inside of this place, orange paint. I can actually pour that on the ground and use it for water instead. I guess at the end of the day, I could just lay out water normally. I mean like water collectors outside normally and just cross my fingers it actually collects. It won't be as efficient as a collector, but it will get the job done. Anyways, we're on the final story, so let's see what we got. And then I think we can drive home a, a happy, happy person which we have a freaking corn dog, some mutton chop. I'll take as much as I can. Free ice cream, a steak, another garbage bag, two garbage bags, and a single needle, which I didn't have. So we are leaving with, what, five, six, seven, seven garbage bags, 
a whole bunch of decorative plants, including a water dispenser, which I will take, because why the hell not? I do want to make sure this bad boy's filled up before I leave, though. And if that wasn't good enough, we're leaving with like nine bags of chips, some cupcakes, pop, sugar, a bunch of actual modded magazines. I think we have all volumes of Wasteland Warrior, at least for our weapons, including some pliers, which is really pivotal in order to dismantle small items. Yeah, I would count that as a win. Plus, we have the supplies to make our own water coolers in the next episode. The only thing I need to do is get back home safely, so let's skedaddle right now, especially because it's extremely hot out and we have a very heavy load. I'll be back in town later, but I, I just want to chill out for a bit. I'm kind of sad I didn't loot the junkyard, but we can always revisit this place later when I'm not, you know, under the, the soul-crushing weight of all of this water. How hot is it inside my car? 40 degrees. Pretty damn good. Yeah, let's just head home and I can finally rest for the rest of the day. I'm really happy with how long the power's been going on without me needing to actually use a generator, by the way. It is so damn nice and I hope it keeps up at least for like another week or so. And then I think we'll be in it for the long haul, especially with all the corpses decomposing as we speak. Peace the hell out. Day by day, this place slowly starts to look more like a home. Welcome back to the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge, and I think we're going to focus on more basey things today. Namely, setting up our generators, organizing our water, and building up our skills to become a more formidable survivor, particularly their carpentry and electrical stats. Summer Steve has survived around 13 days, so it's going pretty damn good. The only thing that isn't is that we are now underweight, but we can fix that pretty easily with the massive stockpile of food that I got. Hopefully this episode is going to be a lot more chill compared to all of the looting runs we've done before. So let's start it off right by moving our generators and connecting them to the grid. If you remember last episode, you would know that we now have two generators, so we got one for our main base and we got a second for our gas station, which basically means that we have infinite gasoline. What I'm trying to say is that I am more than ready for the power to go out. The only thing that I will be missing out on is that we are not going to be able to bring back the temperature to be 72 degrees indoors, but it should still be cool enough for me to use normally. Let's go drive down really quick so I don't have to deal with these terrible temperatures, and then we can drop off our new generator right at this car here. Okay, we're here. Cool. Let's get out before I die horribly. Because as chill as I am, all it takes is a few minutes of me not looking properly and I would die horribly. There is also some propane that I can take with me now, now that we do have some propane torches. I really do hope that we get a welder mask one of these times so that I actually can get started with metalworking. Anyways, we are sufficiently cooled down, so let's go drop off our gasoline out here so I can fill it up and connect our generator. Just like this. Awesome sauce. We really don't need it right now, but I'll sure as hell give it a quick little test run to see if everything runs decently. And it looks like it does. Okay, oh, I am so happy that we have this. Now, I am almost dying of thirst, so I will fill up the rest of these gas cans, load them into the car, and I can get the hell back to our base. I am also going to be taking that ice container right over there because I think it would be a very good fit for our base. Anyways, let's make sure we get as much fuel as possible. Cool, that's five filled up gas cans. I'm gonna leave two here so I can refuel the generator whenever I feel like it. Okay, let's get home before my body starts to murder me in so many different ways. Okay, what the hell just happened there? That was a really weird crash. <laughs> I kind of just slammed into the middle of nowhere, but we are home with a little less carrying capacity, but with five gas cans and a pos popsicle freezer inside. So let's go plop all these bad boys down and see what's up next. And honestly, I think it's gonna be organizing all of these containers right now. There is so much water stacked up on these like little shelves here that it's kind of not vibing with me anymore. So how about we turn our bathrooms in here 
into their own respective fuel collection spots, right? This one here can be my gasoline and propane storage, with the other one being where I store most of my water that I'm not using. That way it's not really up in the front of my house, just kinda not chilling. Yeah, you know what? Let's go do that right now. Bam. Now we got our water situation situated. Don't ask me how this is a very good location as I did place all of my drinking water within a very dirty bathroom, but if it works, it works. We got our drinking water here, we have our dirty water in this corner here, and we have our empty water there. Inside the next little bathroom here, we got our fuel and we have our propane. And I would say we are collecting quite the stash. Now, I did make one oopsie, and that was accidentally picking up the cash register. I couldn't place it back down, so I just shoved it inside this snack machine here. Overall, things look so much more clean inside our front area, which is something that I am going for. Don't mind all the furniture in the corner. Matter of fact, I'm going to pick those up real quick and shove them inside a snack machine as well for now. There we are. Now it's looking a lot more organized. And you want to know the best thing? We've only wasted half the day, so I kind of want to get on to our next little goal, it, which involves water as well. As I want to grab these garbage bags here and the lumber down there to start to get some water collection going. We know that it rains on this map now, so I really want to take advantage the next time that it does, and I really don't want to be caught lacking. So the quicker we get this done, the better. I don't know how much we're going to be able to build out of just four bags, but I also can grab all of our empty buckets and the like in order to set them out and a bout. Oh, that is such a fantastic idea, because even with the filled up water containers that we have, I can just use the larger water dispenser containers to fit all that and then put all of this stuff outside. So let's make this quick as it is extremely hot out and plop down some rain. Oh, we don't have the carpentry level. Well, you know what I'm going to do for the rest of the day, then I'm going to go sit inside and I am going to read my book. I'll save it for another day, and by another day, I mean tomorrow when I speed run the hell out of this place. Let's get reading, and while we're at it, how about we go craft up some more arrows? I was looking through the crafting options earlier, and we are able to make iron arrowheads at this point, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. We're going to make 10 of these bad boys. Okay, cool. I'll put the rest of the arrow supplies in our bag as we can craft them on the go, so I want to have that around just in case if we need it. Okay, it's time to read a book and shoot our bow into the wall in order to build up our skill. I'll see all of you tomorrow. Hey there, I hope you didn't miss me, as I sure have missed you. You. All I did that entire night was shoot at a wall and read a book. Which has given me a plus 75 experience boost in carpentry, and we're about halfway through our first level of archery, so I would say things are going pretty damn good. And in order to get our last carpentry level, I think we pay a nice little visit all the way down towards that one radio station. For one, there's a, there's a bunch of furniture I can disassemble, and two, there are some radios down there that I can easily get some electrical XP. And look at that, it's raining. I should really hurry it up. I, I guess one thing we can do is just set out all of the containers so I can grab at least a little bit of rainwater. Another thing that I will be doing is putting all of the containers that I can use for rain collection into these water jugs here. So that way I have as much outside as possible. There we are. Now we have a bunch of empty bottles that I can use for collection instead. And I will definitely say it's better than nothing. So let's go set out the containers and finally get moving. It's also extremely cold out. And by extremely cold, it's <laughs> it's under 110 degrees. 
Actually, it's 114, but you know what? It's better than nothing. Let's go lay out these buckets before the rain decides to stop. Hell yeah, it's already picking up a whole bunch of water. As soon as we get a couple of dedicated rain collectors, I think we won't need to worry about water as much as we would need to in the start of this series. But we are bored and a little sad, so let's go spice up our life by moving down to a building. Maybe we can even snag a couple of zombies with our bow on the way. Okay, we made it over. Sadly, there were no zombies for me to practice my target shooting on, but we're inside now, so it's about high time we grind out the rest of our skills. This entire house is getting demolished right now. Alrighty, I would say that wasn't a bad run. We got to level 4 carpentry, and we are 4 experience away from electrical level one. As soon as we get that and we get a couple of uh, mechanic skills, Trash, or sorry, Steve, will finally be able to hotwire any vehicle I see in the area. So as much as I do love my car, by the way, I, I named it Donuts. I forgot to mention it to you all, but I did name it Donuts in my head. But yes, we are getting extremely close to a very nice power curve, and as so long as the environment keeps up, I think we got some great things ahead of us. I also forgot to dismantle these couches here, so it's good that we're doing it now. I won't be taking many of the planks as they are extremely heavy, but I will be taking all of the nails as you can't get enough. Oh, I also found some beta blockers within this bathroom here. And while I usually don't take them, I realize that my bow reloading skill relies heavily on the panic moodle. So I think having those would be a very awesome life hack for me when I'm fighting zombies with the bow. Other than that, I think we have cleared this place out pretty well. So let's get back home and let's get our damn water collectors built. And you know what? I'm going to take as many planks as possible. Anything that I can carry within this bag is basically free loot. So having a couple of planks to start off with means I won't need to grind out as much later. Okay, now I'm ready to rock. I will also mention that it has gotten brutal once again. It's back up to 128 degrees and just moving from the barn over to the gas station almost put me in the danger zone. It's... gosh, that is so scary. But we are going to manage just fine. And while I am here, I did spy with my little eye a couple of trash cans here that I will be able to yoink some more garbage bags off of. I mean, that's one, that's two, and that's three. Not only that, but we also have a couple of payphones here, which I might be able to disassemble for that last little bit of XP. And that we will. Cool. We got to level one electrical, which is all that really matters. And I was about to say how useless any other electrical level is. But the more I'm thinking about it, the more I'm realizing I should really start to hoard electrical scrap. Because we quite literally only have two generators to use. So keeping them up in tip top shape is going to be a necessity. So yeah, that's another thing that I really need to think of is to take any electrical scrap I come across now. Right now, we really don't have too many, but when I disassemble stuff like radios and watches, I will definitely keep it along with me. Anyways, it's enough of complaining. I think it's about high time we finally build our rain collector barrels. Because as cool as these pots and pans are, they don't really collect a lot of rainwater, at least as efficiently as a dedicated one. So let's go grab all of our supplies and plop as many as we can down. Which is sadly only going to be two for right now, as we are missing one extra rain collector. But boom, we got two of these bad boys plopped down and ready to be used the next rainfall. I'm going to leave out all of our pots and pans as well as they have not accumulated too much. So I think the rest of the day we're going to go and read Carpentry Volume 3, which is for the five to six skill, which so happens to be the one that we're going to be working on now. There's not really much else for me to do other than to sit back, relax and, uh, you know, have a good old brewski with your boy Ferbert or er, Fox, Fred, Freddy Fox, yes. <laughs> That's the name. I would never forget your name. Remember that, little guy. You know what? I think I did forget something as 
Well, yeah, you know what? I almost certainly did, as I forgot about the popsicle freezer inside our car. We're gonna grab this extremely quick, as it's almost 170 degrees out. So much so that I'm only gonna grab a one half each time I go through. Holy crap, I think that's almost a boilable temperature for water. If I were to put some of these uh, pots inside of that car, we might be able to sterilize it with how hot it is in here. So we're going to make this quick, but I am going to grab my little popsicle fridge in here so we have more carrying capacity. Okay, now we're getting pretty stylish for this house. I mean, I really like this front lobby, like, little base that we have going for us. It's really grown on me. You know, it's very, it's very filled up with supplies and lively in that sense but yeah let's go plop this bad boy down so we got even more food storage capabilities i'll actually drop it in front of there yeah that don't look half bad at all bada boom okay it's pretty loud but it sure as hell will get the job done i think that's all that we really need to do today well we got arrows we have our stuff organized we have an extra you know ice popsicle freezer we got to level four carpentry which means that we have some extra rain collector barrels is what i would say of course if i didn't see that we have another four garbage bag with the whole reason on why i wasn't able to craft a third was because of that little sheet of paper inside the garbage bag let's go set up one last rain collector barrel and with that many i might even be able to get a small farm going i mean it's going to require a lot of water but if we're getting as much water as we are with it raining i think we might be able to make it work anyways Where's my planks and where's my nails? We got one more of these bad boys to set up. Bada freaking bingo. Okay, three is a very good amount, but it's not enough because it does not rain a lot at all out here. So I am going to be expanding that whenever we do find a trash cans. I guess one last thing I could start to do is to grab some of my planks here and slowly start to work on an outer wall though that might also require a lot of planks so you know what i'm gonna save the potential future defense of this place for another day when i get my hands on some more logs for now i think this is a perfect time to end the episode all i'm gonna be doing is reading our carpentry book for the rest of the day and quite possibly the next day after shooting up my bow. Who knows, we might get to level one carpentry. What I'm trying to say is that it's going to be pretty damn boring, but we're also going to survive a little bit longer. We are finally at level one archery. It only took half the day of shooting, but we have made it, which I am pretty damn happy about. Overall, today was extremely productive as we got to level four carpentry. We got a boost for carpentry level six, which means that very soon we're going to be able to build stairs and all of the fun stuff that comes with that. I think we go on the hunt back into the town for a welder mask so i can dip my little toes right into metalworking other than that we got a level one into metalworking which is something that we already had we have a level one in electrical a level four in foraging which is another book that i can read our carpentry is going to be fantastic and now we have one single point in archery which means a slightly faster reload time all freaking righty it's 10 p.m Trash has survived 15 whole days, about to be 16 when we wake up, and I can't wait to see what is in store for him in the future. But yeah, we've done a lot of bad base, but yeah, we've done a lot of at base stuff, so it's definitely time to get out and get moving. Anyways, I hope y'all have fantastic days, so peace the hell out. Hey there, howdy, and hello once again. And if you notice anything different, it's because my mic was muted at this point in time. So, I will instead be running you through the events that transpired today to the present. Now, right at this moment, the big goal for the day was finding myself a welder mask so I can finally begin with the metalworking grind. I took the car and begun my search by driving around the local area for either a hardware store 
or a warehouse where the chances are higher. I first came across a potential warehouse-looking place, shooting down the zombies around the area. I found a few mechanical supplies, an extra generator, and figured out that this spot was actually connected to the apartment buildings I looted a few days earlier, but nothing to write home about. So I continued my journey, looking for any potential hotspots for food, swerving my car between the groups of zombies, which led me to a Gigamart, which would have been huge for me, until I found out that the majority of the store was completely empty. Sadly, a few zombie hordes did catch wind of me, so I had to fight for my life. After they were taken care of, I did find some supplies inside of the store. It really wasn't the loot you would have expected out of the Gigamart, though, as it was mainly filled up with shotguns and shotgun shells. Though it was getting pretty late, so I decided to call it quits for the Welder Mask quest, and instead focused on securing another building nearby to shelter in for the night, the local bar. I knew for sure that it would have extra alcohol, which meant more food. And I was completely right, because not only did I find enough alcohol and food to last a couple weeks alone, but I also had a bunch of furniture and supplies that I could spend the rest of my day disassembling. Thankfully, I did read the latest carpentry book, so I had a three times multiplier for that certain skill. I then disassembled everything, slept, and finally reached carpentry level five, an inch away from six. It was enough for me though, so I continued my journey to look for hardware supplies and maybe some extra literature, which led me to go finally check out the downtown area of this town. Surely one of these stores were useful, though the zombie population was quite dense here, so I would need to go store by store, working my way up slowly. Which is exactly what I did. I fought my way over towards the pizza store, where I found out that every single piece of food had rotted away in storage, but I wasn't here for the food. As I set up the store to become a kill zone, using fence cheese as my main strategy. It was a pretty long and hard journey, but I was making a pretty big dent in the zombie population, absolutely dunking on these fools. Pretty soon, I was able to fight my way up to an empty clothing store where I had found and decided to keep a cowboy hat I took off a zombie. And after I killed that zombie, I made a gambit to run down the street to scout for more stores ahead, which is where I finally found the hardware store. This was the moment I had been waiting for, as it even had a welder mask inside. If that wasn't good enough, I also found a bookstore not too much further down. I decided to wait on looting it so I could make a tactical retreat and save it for the future as it was getting pretty late. But now we are back in the present. Hello and welcome back to the present. Summer Steve has survived 17 days and 6 hours, killing almost 400 zombies. We also have ourselves a pretty nice cowboy hat, but we have secured a pretty good chunk of this downtown area, and right now my goal is to loot as much as possible inside our car and leave like bandits. But first, I think we need to secure a nice lodging so I don't get overwhelmed and I have a place to fall back to, as it is 4 p.m. and it's getting pretty laid out. And right now, I think our best bet of getting a good place to sleep is going to be the upstairs area of these stores. Now I am a little bit apprehensive about going up these stairs, as I don't know how many zombies are around the area, but we're gonna figure that out together. I hope that's most of the zombies taken care of inside of this building. There are still going to be a few inside bathrooms such as this, but it's definitely not as bad, and I think we can finally go and loot and prepare to sleep for the night. So let's see what we actually got in these, what, four to five apartments, and I'll save that last one for me to sleep in later. So what do we got inside? A single water bottle. Fresh cheese and some stale milk. Two fresh tubs of ice cream. An extra steak and a third tub of ice cream. And lastly, there is gonna be, let's see here, nothing. Absolutely nothing other than a nice shovel, hammer, shotgun shells, and a few different things. Okay, not that bad. We'll disassemble this uh, couch here, and I think we can just rest up for the rest of the day. And do you know what else I might do real quick? 
I might take a damn shower, so by the time we wake up, we will be ready to loot a lot of the upcoming stores and we'll be dressed for the occasion. Oh, and one last thing about this place, I'm gonna be making this spot like a temporary base, so if I find any perishable and fresh food, I'm gonna be popping it inside this fridge's freezer, so I won't be running around with rotting food in my bag and I can, you know, get as much shelf life out of it as possible. I do need to drop off a lot here, but we can do that when we wake up tomorrow. The main thing is that we did grab that welder mask finally. It is so, so nice. Oh, and would you look at that, there's another welder mask inside here, so even if the hardware store wasn't real, we would still be good in that regard. Man, these cardboard boxes have some really good spawns, especially for the paints, because I can use that to carry water later. Okay, now I'm gonna go grab some sleep. I, I will see you later. And by later, I mean right now. Welcome back to day 18. We're gaining some weight back and I am ready to do some major looting. Let's grab some breakfast and then I will drop off all of our supplies in the car. Oh, and if you were curious about how many supplies we got out of the bar, it is inside that trunk right there. Uh, overall, we might have to make this a multi-day trip unless I can find myself a trailer. For now, I'm just gonna jam pack this car with as many supplies as possible. As we do still have three extra seats that I can put supplies inside with. Oh yeah, we're definitely gonna have enough for at least two more stores worth of loot, which I think is gonna be the library slash bookstore and hardware store right up there. There is a zombie group in the way, but all I gotta do is a little bit of fence cheese. Oh, I also came across another alcohol store. So yeah, I don't think we're ever gonna need to worry about alcohol, and I will be putting this in my car if I have enough space by the end of the actual two spots that I care about. For now, it's back to the good old window cheese grind. Yeah, they never stood a chance. It's also extremely nice that it is 101 degrees out, so I can be a little bit more carefree about my actions. That's the word for it. There also is a nice little appliance store right next to the alcohol store. I'm not going to be taking anything from here right now, but I will be marking it down if I do need some metalworking supplies later. There also is, I think, a supposed survivor home down there, which is nice. So I guess I'll go check that out once I'm done here. For now, let's take on this horde and then loot the hardware store right there. It's gonna be a long day. <laughs> I love window cheese so damn much. And it's also surprising to me that there are over 500 people within this town. With the size of it, I, I thought it would have been a lot less, but here I am fighting hordes upon hordes of the undead. But it is going to be worth it at the end of the day, as we have clearance to just about every store in this downtown area now. Oh yeah, the resistance is little to none. It only took, what, a couple of hundred zombie kills with this hammer to get it done, but we got there. And oh my, does it feel good. Sadly, some of these shelves did not spawn with anything, and for some reason... The hardware store has fresh food on the sides, but we don't care about the food, we care about the tools, which includes a club hammer, wood glue, and wire, a free hand torch which I can dismantle, a snow shovel, wrench, and metalworking mag, two boxes of screws, mechanics volume one, twine which is going to be extremely helpful if I want to survive long term here, and some tape with a fishing rod which is useless in this situation, but the two fire axes. That's pretty damn good. I'll take one right now just to use as a weapon. It's been a while since I've had a, you know, a real heavy hitter. <laughs> Up next, we got even more screws, even more metal supplies, a propane torch, which I will always take, some more nails, a hunting knife, including another axe and pickaxe with more tape, even more hunting knives. I don't think we're going to need to worry about any melee weapon in the far future. If that wasn't good enough though, we have ourselves another welder mask, more metal pipes, and a little bit of scrap with some rope. I think that's gonna be it for the major- oh, there's even more. Oh, there's so much more here, including a machete. Before we do get ahead of ourselves though, I am gonna go drop off what we have as I am pretty overweight and that is always a recipe for disaster. 
I missed the fire axe so much. The best thing about this challenge is that there are literally no trees around the area, so axes are only going to be used for chopping down doors and mainly zombies. Not a bad haul so far. Though the more I am thinking about it, the more I'm realizing that this is probably going to be a multi-day trip. We only have like one extra seat of carry capacity, and we have already filled up every other container. Unless... I do something that's a little bit risky, but it could pay off. And that's towing an extra vehicle with our donut car right now, and using that as a makeshift trailer. Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to do just that with this white vehicle down here. Let's just make sure the surrounding area is clear and we'll go link them up and we'll see how far I can actually go with it. And if I can go any decent distance, I'm going to be rolling with the plan. OK, we backed up. We connect the cars, fend off the incoming zombies. Oh yeah, we're going extremely fast. Okay, as long as we're not going less than five miles an hour, we should be able to outrun the shambling undead. So that gives me what? Four extra containers of space. We're going to clean this downtown area right out. Up until the halfway point, that is, as this is a very long area. But the main things I do want to grab is obviously hardware store. Secondly, the library, and thirdly, I really want to go check out the Survivor Home because it is a very big building for it. And we might even get ourselves a katana. For now, let's see what other supplies we got. Which is some duct tape, scrap metal, and welding rods, some useless fishing supplies, a toolbox with some extra scrap metal, another hand torch, which I will actually turn into another improvised flashlight silencer. The more the merrier with that. A padlock with a wooden mallet, a very nice machete and propane torch combo with even more scrap and screws. And lastly, we have ourselves some tape, a useless hand scythe, another shovel with a crowbar and hand axe, an absolutely jam-packed shelf here with another pickaxe, hand axe, hammer, propane torch, and twine. Oh, we're not going to have to worry about twine at all, which is going to be perfect for future reasons. Uh, other than that, though, I think we've cleared this place out pretty well. We definitely got way more welder masks than we needed, but, you know, I don't really need more than one. But if I do lose one, I know where to get them. Is there any cool little back room in here? Oh my god, there is. <laughs> uh, if it couldn't get any better, though it does look like there really isn't much here, so that's useless. But I can come back here to disassemble those shelves later. I will also mention that it is starting to get extremely hot out, so I am going to need to keep an eye on our temperature. It's climbing back up over the 110 degree mark, so yeah, going to be keeping an eye on that. Thankfully, we are surrounded by a bunch of buildings and we can cool off in there just fine. OK, time to go check out what the library has. Though we are quite literally surrounded by buildings, so it's not really much of a problem out here, so long as the power continues to last. Oh yeah, there also is a very nice television store that I can use to grind electrical XP in the future. Wow, that zombie almost snuck up on me there. You can also see that the body heat generation is a little worse for wear now that I am wearing some basic clothing, but I think we can afford a small amount of drip this far into the series, you know what I mean? Anyways, please be unlocked. Of course it isn't. But that's fine as well, because I can always smash down the windows and get in that way. Also, don't mind me, zombie. I'm just going to browse around the area. And oh my, this place has a lot of books. We've already read a lot of these magazines, but the main things I'm going to be looking out for are just about actually every book, really. Any book that I don't have is something that might be useful later. But instead of boring you, I'll be telling you which books I'm going to be leaving with at the end here. I'll be honest, I came here looking for copper, and Summer Steve has found gold. Not only did we get the last two volumes in carpentry to complete my full level skill, but we have a full metalworking volume tree, almost three levels of the farming books. We have two books of tailoring, two books of trapping, and a couple of magazines, which allows me to trap for animals. So it's safe to say that we have enough literature in here to where I am going to be able to grind out some 
Arab scales literally to the max, and there is still some books left over, a lot of it is redundant, but the main thing is that there are normal books. So I might be taking a bunch of these as well so we can fight off depression in a more reasonable manner instead of just, you know, dealing with it. And with our extended little trailer here, we shouldn't have to worry about finding space for anything at all. Get out of the way, ma'am. I saw you coming a mile away. Catch me with it. Okay, it is 150 degrees inside the car, so I'm probably not going to be using uh, the interior of this place. Holy crap, 150? Okay, that is, um, yeah, that's kind of bad, but it still gives me some extra space to work with, all right? It's not the end of the world. I mean, aside from carry capacity alone, the usefulness of this car is pretty huge, as I can use it as a makeshift barricade, use it to practice my mechanical skill, and if that wasn't good enough, I can also use it as a portable fuel storage unit. So yeah, we got a lot of uses for it, even if it doesn't carry as much as I would hope because of the uh, absolutely blistering temperatures. And from the looks of it, we're not even going to need to use the seats in the second car, as I still have a lot of space to go inside here. But there is one last spot that I do want to check out before I leave, and that's going to be the survivor home area. Oh, I also grabbed some charcoal and I equipped it as my secondary. I almost forgot about that. And you know what? While I'm at it, I'm going to go yoink this grill right down here. We won't be able to take the propane, but having a way to cook food that isn't a stove is going to be pretty huge, especially if it means I don't have to use that damn microwave. Thankfully, I am able to fit the barbecue inside, but there is little to no more space inside our car other than our bag. So let's cross our fingers that we get our hands on a nice katana and that the fight inside isn't the worst, but it is a survivor place, so it might get pretty dicey quick. The only way to find that one out, though, is by entering this place myself and already it looks like a bust. This place is completely abandoned, so I guess it's up to the upstairs. Don't mind me, just walking on through. Alrighty, time for the moment of truth. Does this place actually have survivor weapons inside, or have I been lied to? I have, in fact, been lied to. <laughs> okay, so it looks like this place being barricaded was just a red herring for a survivor home, and it's actually just a part of the map. Yeah, that's gonna be a bummer. But there is one building that's a little weird to me, and it's this room right here. I don't know why it's barricaded, and I kind of want to see why. You know what I mean? So let's go unbarricade this bad boy. And see what we got cooking in here. And oh, okay, it's not that bad. I mean, there's nothing like to write home about, but the extra bowl of pasta and stew is always going to be nice. Especially the duct tape and twine. Can't get enough of that good stuff. Uh, doesn't seem to be any like weaponry inside though. Uh, I, I say that as I see another box of shotgun shells and a double barrel, including some cabbage seeds and an empty bucket, which I will be taking, as I do want to start up a farm in the future. Despite this being a very low water world, I think with enough water collectors, we will be able to pull it off pretty well. Oh. Oh. Oh my god. Ho oh, oh, ho oh. ho! Well, it looks like I came looking for copper yet again, and I found gold. Okay, you know what? I think we're gonna go pour out all the water in here, and I'm gonna bring this back to my base. Holy crap, there's so much water here. I am gonna be overweight, but I should be able to make it home quick enough to be able to, you know, grab as much as possible here. I wanna grab this, and I wanna leave. I do know that I am wasting the water inside right now, but that's fine, as I wanna bring it a little bit closer to home. Please don't break too many of these. These are- oh gosh, I've already broken two. But hey, I'll take three any day of the damn week. Okay, let's get the hell out of here and let's drive home with a huge bounty. But that does remind me that there are going to be rain collector barrels inside the train carts of that one place I spawned inside. I mean, three rain collector barrels, that's pretty freaking huge. And I don't want to get too greedy in this series, as the minute you do that is when things go wrong. Plus, we have, you know, an entire filled up trunk, an extra car to do mechanical stuff with, yeah, we're doing fantastic, and I think next episode, I am gonna go on the grind for metalworking, reading, and just setting up some more long-term 
ways of survival and maybe even dipping my toes inside a small farm. For now, let's drop down three more rain collector barrels. <laughs> oh yeah, it looks so freaking beautiful. I, that was a love tap, by the way. And that also reminds me that there are going to be some rain collector barrels back at our spawn point near those train tracks that I could backtrack towards. Anyways, I think I'm gonna end the episode here as I have a lot of loot to drop off, including a new grill. Peace the hell out, everyone. That is the sound of the power finally going out in the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge, and this is where things start to get a little bit dangerous. Because that means the air conditioning is finally out. As you see, it's 93 degrees in here, and if I were to go outside, it would be 104. So going inside really only lowers the temperature by 10 degrees, and if the summers keep it up with 130 degree temps, I might just bake indoors without even having a chance of survival. The only thing we can do though is prepare for the long haul as things are not going to get any easier. Hopefully it rains soon and hopefully we're going to be able to manage just fine. First things first, let's go connect our generator to this house so at least our food doesn't go bad. As you see, it does not affect the air conditioning though so we are completely out of that. The one good thing is that we do have so many supplies that we should be able to just sit real pretty inside here for quite a while. But now that the power has gone out, I guess our whole goal is just to try and survive as long as possible and really get started with the long haul. So that means more water collection, more ways of getting food, and more ways of just sitting on our butt, yet still taking care of our daily needs. For one, we got gas, but two, I think it's about time we get more water. Thankfully, we do have an extra four garbage bags, so we can go set up another water collector ASAP. Awesome. Oh man, I can't wait till it rains. If it ever does, who knows, the last time it rained might have been the actual last time. But now that we got that, I think it's about time we take our car and we head all the way back over to the train tracks so I can get even more water collection going. If we're going to survive with such little rain, we need as many collectors as possible. So after I go grab a quick little bite to eat and some extra water, we're going to go head out and do just that. And we'll might as well eat some of the stale food that's probably going to go bad real quick. There we are. Let's get this damn bread. I also took some of your advice and I left the windows down of this car and it does look like that the temperature equals out. So whenever I do leave my car, I think that's going to be the vibe is just opening the window so things aren't as bad. It's actually huge because not dealing with 150 plus degree temperatures will save my life. Anyways, let's go detach this car, and I think we'll go grab a little bit of extra gas at the gas station before we do go grab our water collectors. We're about halfway, so I think it'd be worth a nice little fill up, and then we're off to the races. Hell yeah. If anything else, we do have a very good base location as having a gas station right next to my main base is huge. I mean, we don't need to gas up often, but having the option is absolutely huge, and it does look like it has cooled it down pretty well inside here. Oh, donuts, you treat me too freaking well. If only I treated you a little bit better. <laughs> and here we are. I'm going to keep the car running with a slightly cooler temperature while we go grab each of the water collector barrels. I also do know that there is some lumber and stuff in here, so this is definitely going to be worth it. I'm just really sad that, um... We won't be able to go inside and be completely safe anymore, so I do need to watch how much I'm exerting myself while doing this. Okay, where were these water collectors at now? Right here. Let's go pack these bad boys up. If I wasn't terrible at actually picking them up, I hate my luck sometimes. That was two 30% chances, and somehow I broke both of them. But it's better outside once I set them up than inside a train cart where it can't collect water. And while I'm at it, I think I'm just going to move down this way through the train carts to see what else is inside of these places. I really haven't checked them out recently, though I do know that there is the occasional lumber pile. 
Now, I was about to say that there was a whole lot of nothing, but this definitely looks like a whole lot of something. Actually, never mind. It is completely empty. Oh, no, nope, never mind. Okay, so it does look like that these train cars are going to be a very good ally for me. An empty watering can, which I can use, and whichever ones we can't, you know, loot right now, I think we ought to disassemble these bad boys. If I brought my damn saw. Oh, my God. Maybe there's one in here? No, there just seems to be some fertilizer, which is actually pretty huge. Some broccoli seeds and a welder mask in here. Wow, that would have been really helpful to find out before. Okay, I'll take it. While I can't access the real center of these crate piles, I sure can mark it down for later. Let's just continue moving down while making sure we don't go too far from our car. Matter of fact, I should be keeping an eye on my temperatures at all times now, and there is a second set of crates here already with a fire axe. Oh, this place is gonna be huge, I'm telling you. And even more paint. If I could get into the middle of this spot though, I'm sure we could find some real good stuff. Maybe I can figure that out later. We'll go through probably the next group of these and then I'll call it quits as we are getting pretty far from our house and it is warming up pretty fast. Okay, more log piles, even more log piles. Matter of fact, every single spot here has been a log pile. And in this one, there's absolutely nothing. Okay, there are some zombies showing up, so I don't think we're going to be able to get any further. Yeah, screw that. That's a massive horde, and I really don't want to get overheated fighting zombies. So how about we push our way up instead while cooling off in our car to see if there's anything else that's not in Death Valley population 1000 plus zombies. And would you look at that, I actually forgot to empty out any of the seats inside my cars before I went on this journey, so we just have a bunch of supplies in here. Well, I guess this isn't much of a looting run, but <laughs> it is real funny how I forgot to drop off all of these supplies. We still got our trunk though, and that's what really matters. And really it doesn't matter, as if things got too bad, I could just always carry the water barrels and extra supplies on me. What do we got in here though? A battery, tent pegs, couple of planks. I'm sad. Wait, you know what? I bet there might be a saw within our car. Oh, I 100% I, I bet that there is. For now, we just got to look at what we can actually loot, which is a shovel, a plunger, nails, more paint, more lumber, and even more lumber. Wow, this place kind of sucks, but you know what? I'm actually going to go grab some of these logs here, about nine in total. So yeah, we'll take these logs, head back as soon as possible, and see if I can craft up a staircase very soon. We don't have the exact level for it right now, but we are getting extremely close, and that might be another two water collectors that I won't have to scavenge for. Hell yeah, we got seeds, we got fertilizer, and an extra rain collector barrel. Overall, pretty damn good. Not the best, but you know, we can always be back here later when I get my hands on a saw, which might be right now. Oh, we got a saw. Okay, now we're cooking. I'm gonna go right back after I'm done cooling down and we're gonna see what else we can scavenge out of here. And most importantly, by disassembling the crates inside, we might get to level six carpentry. Big money, big money, big money, big money. What do we got? More nails, carrot seeds, an extra level of carpentry, more paint, tomato seeds, shotgun shells, and a single sandbag. Okay, that wasn't as crazy as I was expecting, but it was definitely worth it for the extra level in carpentry alone, as that allows me to build upstairs to the other rain collectors. So we're going to do just that. It is just about 9 p.m., but we're not tired yet, so I can definitely push it a little bit further. We just got to be pretty quick on this. So let's go pack it up and start moving right now. I'll see you there. Alrighty, we've made it over. Let's hurry up, pop out, drop off these logs, which are wearing my character down. And then I can fight these zombies on my own terms. And by own terms, I mean using a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Fight me, idiots. Nice. Okay. Those zombies on the fence won't be able to see what's happening. Let's just do a nice little 360 perimeter check. And I think 
we can grab our rightfully earned rain collectors. Using guns and ranged weapons at this point is going to be a lot more important, as I won't be able to cool off inside buildings, so having ways of killing zombies without getting too heated up is always going to be nice. Okay, no zombies around. Let's go build out the staircase right now. Hell yeah, it's as easy as that. Thankfully, I did not fall down, and now I have earned both of these rain collector barrels. We should wash ourselves off with the water, as I won't be using this very soon. So it's good that we just do this right now, and then I'll fill up any empty watering cans and paint buckets that I got. Matter of fact, I'll do this for any container that I can fill up right now. That is a huge amount of water that I'll be able to use to fuel my future farm. Get out of here, you bozo. Now that the threats are dealt with, let's go grab our bucket and the rest of this to go fill up. I don't know how much we're going to get out of here, but it does look like we're going to get quite a bit. And by quite a bit, I meant it. We got an extra four paint buckets, an extra normal bucket, and some normal water. There's about three units left, so I think that's worth to just pour on the ground. And I'll go grab these rain collector barrels. Both of them picked up perfectly. Awesome. And you know what? We're not even done there, as I want to disassemble these stairs so I can get a little bit of extra XP. <laughs> yeah, I'm that greedy, is what I would say if I had a single screwdriver, which I don't. Okay, I'll disassemble it later. Let's get home and let's sleep. It's almost 1 a.m., so yeah, it's time for it. Though before I do sleep, I will be dropping off my three new rain collector barrels. Huge. I'll see you in the morning. Hello and welcome to day 20. Overall, the power going out has not been the worst for me as the temperatures have been extremely forgiving so far. Our fuel is looking good. And I think right now what we ought to do is set up a farm using some of the outdoor water we already have. Indoors, we have enough water to last us probably like six plus months, so I'm not worried about that. Though I do want a farm really bad for self-sustenance. For one, it gives me a lot of food. And two, it would allow me to start trapping, which would be absolutely massive for me as I can get protein and my weight that way because we can't rely on fishing. I want to create a self-sustaining character and this is gonna be the way. I just have to take things, you know, one step at a time. As I'm just waiting for it to hit 130 degrees without me knowing which would lead to my end. But we have a lot of water, so much so that I think it's worth to create a farm. Let's go grab a shovel or hand trowel. There might be some inside this car. I just got to open up the window so it's not as, you know, hot inside. There we are. And would you look at that? We got ourselves a snow shovel. <laughs> While not exactly a hoe meant for farming, it should get the job done just fine. All right, ground, prepare to be furrowed. Oh, and it definitely looks like digging furrows does raise our body heat generation. So I'm going to do the smart thing and turn on our AC slash heater right now. So if we do get overheated, you know, I'm not dead. <laughs> oh, donuts, you save my life yet again. Is the window closed? Yes, it is. OK, that should cool down soon. For now, I think we dig out one more line of furrows. No, you know what? We'll hold it off on six furrows right now and we'll see if we have enough water to do some more afterwards. Let's get into that cabbage and carrot seed grind, though. Do we got any more seeds in here? Oh, we got so many cabbage seeds. OK, we're chilling. <laughs> and we even have some NPK fertilizer. This line is going to be carrots and this line is going to be actually. No, this line is carrots and that line is cabbages. Sorry. So we got six down. Let's see how much water these things take now. Alrighty, so it looks like for every paint bucket, just about, we can get a single cabbage plant to well watered. It, it uses up uh, quite a big chunk, but there is a little bit of spillover left, so I'll just, you know, pour that in there and continue pouring out every single bit. We should definitely have enough for every single plant here, though, so we might make another line, but we'll see how much we have near the end here. 
Oh yeah, we'll definitely have enough. And usually, I would stagger out these plantings, so I won't have to eat all of them in one go. But because we do have a generator, working power, and a bunch of double freezers, I'm not really worried about that, as I can basically freeze every food in time. So let's go throw in some more cabbages. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this place is really coming together, isn't it? Let's go grab all of the leftover water and finish it off the right way. It's also been extremely nice out, only 107 degrees. That is one good thing about surviving for a while, is that if we can make it to winter, the temperatures will be slightly more tolerable. There we are, we got every single plant watered. Now I'm gonna need to keep tabs on this just about every day. That is one problem with farming in this challenge, let alone, you know, the, the, the low plant resiliency, is that I'm gonna have to keep tabs in order to water these every day because, you know, Rain doesn't come around here often, but that's why we gotta prepare by setting out all of our containers. And if that wasn't good enough, we got another 30 saucepans and pots down here. Even then we got what? Let's see here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rain collector barrels. Hopefully growing in the future if I go check out those apartments later. For now though, I think we got it all settled out. I think up next, we go craft up ourselves some basic trapping for birds yeah because if you didn't know foraging tables still work on this map albeit they are a little bit crusty but this counts as a forest land so what i'm thinking is we go all the way to the bottom of here set up some bird traps because you can easily bait birds with worms which i can dig infinitely for and then we wait for the fruits of our labor. That way we can get a little bit of protein in our diets. We won't craft up too many. I would say four or five would do the trick just fine. Oh, and while I'm at it, I'll might as well go take out all of the supplies inside of these seats. There we are. We finally have it all managed with such little space left for weapons, guns, but we got it all, really. The only thing that I'm missing is more modded uh, magazines, which I might go back into town for. But for now, we are chilling. We got enough scrap electronics to where we can repair our generators pretty often. Yeah, it's all going pretty good. So I think for the next little bit here, I am just going to go out and dig for worms. We're gonna take the car with us and we are just gonna start digging in the ground. Those little bastards won't even know what's coming for them. Alrighty, it's about 6 p.m. and we got ourselves 15 whole worms to go for. Digging for furrows did raise our body heat generation by quite a bit, but all I gotta do is hop in this car for like a solid five seconds and we will be good. Now that we got these, we are going to make some sturdy sticks. I don't know how many we need, so I'm just gonna free ball it and give myself 32, or I guess 36. But with these sturdy sticks, I should be able to make some bird traps. Now, I forgot to read the actual magazine for it, but I think we have it around here somewhere. Let's see here. Volume 1, Volume 2. That's where it is at. Once I'm done reading this book, we should be able to make a whole bunch. And by a whole bunch, I mean it. Nine whole stick traps. Let's get these all set up and ready to rock. I hope this is going to be far enough away for the birds to actually get trapped, but we'll figure that out tomorrow. And hopefully tomorrow we will have something to show for this. It took a lot to set it up, but I am so hungry for some damn birds. We're only going to go for six right now because I kind of want to save the rest of these stick traps just in case if these ones break. I do know that they are pretty brittle and I just, you know, I want to go modest on these for now. So yeah, that should be enough. Now all I got to do is bait them with the worms and we shall wait to see what we get. We're probably not going to get anything too crazy as I am sitting at a solid zero for trapping skill, but in the morning, I'm probably going to read the trapping skill books and any other books that I have, grinding up all of my survival abilities. But that's going to be for next time. For now, we're just about done here. The last thing I need to do is fertilize our garden because I forgot that we had fertilizer. Here we are. I hope you little guys grow big and strong now for me, for old Summer Steve, all right? How much fertilizer do we use? Quite a bit. I guess I'll fertilize it twice. There we are. These cabbages should grow in about five to seven business days now. 
don't ask me where I got those numbers because I definitely just came up with them. But now we can finally end the episode. Overall, I'd say it went pretty well and I can't wait for it to rain in the future. Though I know by me saying that, it's probably never gonna rain ever again. We'll figure that out in the future though, won't we? Up next, we're gonna get our thinking cap on and we are gonna start reading. Peace out, everyone. It's been just about 21 whole days of survival, but I think it's about time for Summer Steve to thrive. And today, we are gonna go on a massive skill grind. Also, if you couldn't tell, we've survived long enough for Summer Steve to actually grow hair, so we got that now. Not that it's really useful, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> Anyways, in order to start off this beautiful 100 degree morning, we are going to go check our farm. And then after that, I am very curious about our bird traps to see if we got anything. After that, it's going to be a whole bunch of reading, which I will inform you of the books that we will be reading when we are there. For now, it looks like our cabbages and carrots are still well watered. We'll keep tabs on that just about every day. Now it's time for the traps. Which is not looking good. It looks like none of the traps have been triggered, but I will see if any of the baits have been taken. Nope, not a single one it seems. Thankfully, we only needed to rebait one of them as the other baits have not been taken, but it's a good sign as if the bait is being eaten, it means that there are animals to be trapped. So let's go head back inside because now I can show you what books we're gonna be reading. Let's grab them all, and then I'll describe each one and why I am reading them first. For starters, I really wanna learn DIY crafting for idiots, as that allows me to make a metal workbench. And when I meant DIY crafting for idiots, I meant just about every other magazine that I have not read yet. But for actual books, we are going to be starting off with Trapping Volume 1, as I want to get as much XP from the traps that I already set out. After that, though, we're going to read Farming Volume 1, Metalworking Volume 1, and lastly, Tailoring. That is probably going to be every single skill that I can read an actual book on, so we're going to be here for a long time, as each book takes me just about one full day to read. So really what this entire week is going to be is me sitting in the corner checking on traps daily and making sure that my generator does not run out of fuel. It's going to be an extremely boring existence, but that is where the power of editing comes in. <laughs> so I guess I'm just going to I'm just going to read for a week straight. May God have mercy on Summer Steve's mental health. <laughs> it's gonna be bad, but at least we're gonna be smart. I will see you then. <laughs> Long time no see. I'm just kidding, it's been like 30 seconds, but we have a pretty cool update. For one, I finally finished our Trapping Volume 1 book, but more importantly, it looks like it has finally rained again. This is such a massive boon for me because we have so many filled up saucepans and cooking pots. It's filled up to the max, and if that wasn't good enough, we got water collector barrels filling up quickly. What I'm trying to say is that we're going to be doing pretty damn good when it comes to water. So let's go check our traps, and then I'm going to try and load as much of this water into actual containers that I can possibly fit. Our generator did take a hit as it's now at 65%, but all we have to do is top it off really fast with a little bit of gas and it'll be golden. We don't need to repair it yet as it has only lost 2% condition. This also means that I won't need to water any of these plants anytime soon, so that saves even more water on my end. Sadly, it does look like we have not caught any more birds, so we'll just see if we need to rebate them and we'll continue on with our day. And when I mean that, I mean we're going to go right back into a book-induced coma. Though before we do that, I can grab this empty water jug here and fill it up with as much water as possible. I think it's finally safe to say that even if it rains once a month, we're going to be completely okay. Like it is, we are thriving right about now. 
Also, if you want to see something really funny, by the time I filled up this water jug with water, all of these containers have already filled right back up. I can literally see the rain increase as I'm just sitting here. Yeah. As much as I would love to stay outside and capitalize on as much water as possible, I think we can kind of take a chill pill seeing how fast we can collect water. And that's not even putting in account all of these water containers which are already filled up. Yeah. This is the life. <laughs> I do think this is the point to where I need to voice over everything, as this is going to get pretty boring with nothing really good happening. The only thing that might happen is my crops might grow a little bit, and we might catch a bird or two out of our traps. For now, we gotta read a whole five books. Wish me luck, it's gonna be a long one. And that is exactly what I did. I spent the rest of the day reading through my books, waking up to check my farm and traps, though nothing was caught. Though I did dig out a new row of farming plots of cabbages and tomatoes because of the amount of excess water I had. After that, I dug out worms for the rest of the day. I woke up once again, checked the farms with their no animals being caught. I thought it was a fluke and pressed on with my daily routine. Lots of reading, lots of checking, and lots of digging later, I finally decided that it's time to reposition my bird traps near the gas station for a little bit better of luck, which seems to have done the trick. Well, 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 this part is not a voiceover, because it looks like repositioning the traps has worked out. Oh, I was so worried that the oldness of this map wouldn't have given me the fruits of my labor, but here we are. We got some stick traps that have been activated, giving me dead birds. This means that we are gonna be able to live out here. <laughs> oh, yes. That's what I love to see. We, we read through about two thirds of the mechanics volume one, and we have have about three more books to go. I decided to add on Carpentry 4 and Foraging 3 just so we can get a whole bunch of bonuses. As you see from my skill page, we have a lot of bonuses. And really, the only things we will be missing as soon as I'm done here is first aid and fishing, but those can literally eat an egg for all I care because they're useless to me. Anyways, we're gonna rebate these traps and we are gonna check these bad boys every damn day day. I might even want to, you know, add some more traps to it, but for now, I think six is fine, and I'll add all of the dead birds in a very special spot. It's the massive ice freezer. It's kind of a psychopath thing to do, but trust me when I say it, that this is food storage, okay? Don't mind all the dead birds that I haven't cleaned. It's It keeps the freshness. And another thing that I will do, because it is raining out yet again, which means that every single water container I have out here is filled, is I think we can add a little bit to the farm. We already added an extra, uh, an extra row, but I think we can add in one more with how plentiful this rain is. I really do hope that we have enough space in the freezers after I grow all this stuff out because we are getting a pretty big farm, especially for one person. So much so that I don't think we're ever going to need to worry about weight because I can just engorge myself on all of these veggies. We're going to go half radishes on this one and half broccoli. That way we can have a little bit of variety. The rain should water it just fine. And if not, I don't need to worry about water. Okay, back to reading. We got three more books to go. I'll be real, this time was not too much different. I read books, checked the farm, caught some birds, and read so many more books, bringing us to the present. Never before have I seen something as beautiful as having a plus three multiplier for just about every skill in the game. It's only for the beginner books right now, but we have a whole bunch more to learn off of. Anyways, I have been in the daily grind. It's been pretty mind numbing, but we have survived for 28 days, one hour, and stuff has been going extremely well for us. We only got around four dead birds so far out of our trapping endeavors, but I think today is going to be the day I kind of walk you through what I've been going through other than like a voiceover. 
But now that we have read all of the beginner books, up next is going to be a big old grind fest. Though today, I am just going to do some small tasks around the house, saving the big grinding for later. So I guess this could also be considered a daily walkthrough of Summer Steve's life. For one, I usually check the generator, which is extremely low right now. So how about we go fix that up in the future by bringing a gas can with us? And yes, if you're wondering, I've been using a gas can for water. But aside from that, the condition is still pretty good, but we'll might as well top it off. I've been using all of the electronic scrap, and it has worked out pretty well. Plus, it feels extremely satisfying with the sounds repairing this damn thing, and it's very easy to maintain, as it only takes off two condition every day from what I've been seeing. Our water collectors are filled, and so are our buckets, with our farms thriving. Speaking of that, I think our first batch of cabbages is almost ready to harvest. There are diseases inside of these things, but some of them are still doing pretty well for themselves. So it's not like a, uh, it's not like an entire crop ender, you know? But once I check out my generator and once I check out my water levels, I go and drive down to the good old gas station. So how about we turn on our second generator and do just that. I don't know how much gasoline is within these gas stations, but I'm guessing it's so high to where I probably won't need to experience it ever in my life. I also need to make sure I turn off the damn thing. That's that's pretty important as well. There we are. After that, though, I usually go and check my bird traps. I'm kind of sad with the performance of it, but it is a passive income that I don't really need to keep much tabs on, and it looks like... We got two extra birds today. Not bad. I've also been digging a whole bunch of furrows for worms, and we have 22 right now, or just 20, so I don't need to worry about that. These birds are extremely high in food, so it is going to be worth to stockpile them. It makes me feel a little bit better as well. And if you're wondering why I am only trapping birds right now, it's because worms are very easily obtainable. I will say though, as soon as my farm starts to produce a lot more food, I will be using that to trap larger game. But for right now, it's still in the growing stages, so I don't really want to go too overboard with it. This usually is the part where I go inside and I read for the entire day, but I have read all of the books there is. So instead, I can do a couple of very important things. Number one, I need a damn shower. <laughs> There's so much water here that I don't really care about wasting a little bit on personal hygiene, and it makes me feel a little less yucky. Now that we're done with that though, I kind of want to grab all of these empty bottles and purify some more drinking water so I don't have to, you know drink from a gas can and it gives me some extra stuff to do as well so all i'm going to be doing is filling up everything with water this is going to take a while and multiple water collectors but it'll be worth it because it'll rain soon enough after but there we are we got like 20 bottles three jars and one full gas can and with the power of charcoal and a microwave we should be able to purify it in seconds so let's go ahead and put all of our glass objects inside this charcoal grill here and put our plastics inside the microwave. And oh my, completely unrelated to our current task, but that recent dead bird I caught gives me minus 31 hunger. Okay, it looks like trapping is gonna be huge for me and I can just stockpile all of this right now while I go eat my chips and drink my alcohol. Anyways, it's time to cook. Don't ask me how this tastes because I definitely am using a gas can that previously had gasoline in it and now I'm putting dirty water inside, microwaving it to sterilize it. It's absolutely vile, but it should work. Come on, give me that good stuff. Boom. One full thing of gas, five fresh bottles of water, which is going to be a massive stockpile soon as soon as i light this bad boy up and use some money to burn it why the hell not it didn't take long for all these water bottles to be purified and we have ourselves like a solid i would say 
two weeks to a full month of water pre-cooked for me to drink at my leisure. We'll put out the fire inside the charcoal grill just in case, drop down the charcoal for future use, and deposit all of our water, including the gas can. If we had enough room, that is, I'll just use this nearby duffel bag to store the rest of our water. And that is basically a full day. I don't really have anything else to do. We're looking pretty clean. We have food, we have water, and soon our farms will flourish. Next episode is gonna be the big grind. I can't wait for it, and I definitely think we are in our groove when it comes to self-sufficiency. Just a little bit more, and we will be golden. I find it really funny and ironic that the cowboy character has his technically own ranch. <laughs> Oh, this is really one of the only self-sustaining farm runs I've done as well, so that's fun. Okay, now it's actually time to head out. See you guys later. You know, I think it's finally that point in the challenge to where things get pretty damn slow for old Summer Steve, and we are now in the post-survival depression phase. But that's not gonna stop me from riding this whole challenge on its way out into self sufficiency. Welcome back to the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge. As today is going to be the day I grind out a whole bunch of skills. And I truly mean it when I say it. We're gonna be here grinding some stuff out for a while, but there is going to be an order to all of this madness. As I really can't blitz through some of these skills because I am gatekept from reading any more volumes until I actually reach the level 2 skills for a lot of these things. So I'm going to be saving a lot of our skills such as electrical in favor for skills that I can do right in the comfort of my own home or in the parking lot which is currently going to be cooking and metalworking. I want to squeeze in a little bit of metalworking as I have a bunch of shelves that I can dismantle and we are extremely close to level 2, which can prompt me another book. It is getting pretty late, but I am going to do just that. And now that we have a welder mask with ample amounts of fuel, this should be no problem. Pop, pop. Okay, that was a pretty quick bop montage. I was expecting a little bit more resistance, but that opens me up to be able to read volume two of metalworking. Not only that, but it also allows me to craft up something pretty freaking cool, which is an entire metal workbench. I really don't know what the heck this thing is gonna do, but it's gonna look real cool as soon as Summer Steve is done crafting this bad boy up. Nice. It don't really do much for me right now, but it sure as hell adds in a little bit of extra spice to this main room. Plus, it can be used as storage, and it can also disassemble tools if I so wanted to do that. It is 9.40 a.m., so I think for the rest of the day, I'm gonna start to build up my cooking skills. And when I mean that, I mean I'm just gonna quite literally grab everything and shove it right into my grill. <laughs> we'll figure the rest out as soon as it's done getting cooked up, you know what I mean? Yes, sir, just like Mama used to make. Oh, this is rancid. And you know what, just for a funny little bit, let's throw an entire melon on this grill as well. I'm pretty sure people, I'm pretty sure people cook their melons, right? Right. And once we get all this meat cooking, I have some stale bread and butter to craft up some freaking burgers. I bet you weren't expecting a grill episode, that's for damn sure. And hopefully it'll get finished soon and I can level up on my cooking skill with what little we have. Oh, and I almost forgot we can also skin all of our dead birds to add on to our cooking experience. We won't cook it up, but I'll pop it in the uh, grill to defrost it. Okay, cool. There's one level. The birds are defrosted, and I'll go take out all of my steak and pork chops. We'll leave the mutton chops on the floor. You know, that can be good rat food. And while we're at it, we can go butcher up all of these birds to turn them into their own separate fillets. Pop that in there, wait for that to cook up, and we got ourselves a stew. Let's slice this bread up. Bada boom, that's level two in cooking. And we can go make ourselves a couple of burgers. Let's get a pork chop on that bad boy, some herb, a little bit of ketchup, some mustard, and some small bird meat. The rest of this fresh food can go right back into the freezer so it doesn't go to waste. Okay, not bad. 
but it also looks like these bread slices are rotting in real time. I took them out for like one hour and they already they already molded up. So I have to be very proactive in, you know, getting this done soon. And our burger is also stale, so let's nom on this thing right now. And with that, I will see you in the morning. All the way over to day 29. This day is going to be pretty boring, but I will go check my farm and my traps right now. And oh my, do they seem to be flourishing. That right there in the bottom corner is a ready to harvest cabbage patch. Now I could let it wait a little bit more to seed, but we have so many darn seeds, I think I am willing to make the first harvest a bit of an exception. So let's see how many cabbages we get. Bada boom. That's an entire three cabbages ready to rock. And with those cabbages, I can finally expand my trapping economy which is a wooden box trap. With these bad boys right here, we should be able to target much larger game like rabbits and squirrels. So I'm also going to unstack this log pile and get even more planks down because I want to drop down as many of these as possible. Okay, I think nine is going to be more than enough. So let's go slap these bad boys down. And then for the rest of the day after, or multiple days probably, we are going to be reading Cooking Volume 2 and Metalworking Volume 2 as well. I will see you guys then. But once we are done with that, the rest of the day is going to be pretty boring with me reading Cooking Volume 2 and Metalworking Volume 2. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, and let's go get this bread. Or I guess, I, let's get this meat. Boom. This whole grid array is looking extremely nice. It also looks like we did catch another bird today, so give me that as well. In order to catch things though, I will need to bait every single one of these with a cabbage. Rabbits love cabbage. I don't know what kind of rabbits are out here, but we're going to find out soon. And we're going to figure out how far three cabbages can get us with this mileage. Which, surprisingly, is all nine trap crates. We didn't even go through the full three cabbages. Okay, so we know that one cabbage is about good for three to four traps each. Not bad. We'll also go ahead and rebate all of these bird traps. And when I check these in the morning, we are going to have a bounty. Hopefully. I really don't know how it's going to be in the future, but we're going to figure that out together. Okay, now it's time for the really boring stuff where I just read. I will see you guys tomorrow. It's it's going to be a long day. To be honest, it doesn't really feel like day 30. It feels much more like a day 40. But here we are. Our crops are also growing pretty strongly as well. That's another six cabbages if I want to harvest them right now. But I do want the seeds, so we're going to let those bad boys cook a little bit longer. Though the one thing that I am curious about today is to see if we caught any rabbits. If we can catch rabbits, that means we've basically secured the entire game in our bag, as rabbits are both high in food reduction and very high in calories. So I would never die from rabbit starvation, funnily enough. <laughs> But let's go see what we've caught. And it looks like we've already caught one, two, three, and four traps. Oh my god, we're never gonna die out here. I haven't seen a zombie in weeks. I don't even think they exist anymore. This feels like a normal survival game at this point. The temperatures have also gotten pretty negligible, so I don't even feel the effects. Anyways, we got three bird traps as well, so that's going to be three fresh uncooked birds and four rabbits ripe for picking. Boom, that's a new level of trapping. Though the extra level is truly the icing on the cake for how hefty these rabbits are. Oh my, just picking them up. Check that out though, four dead rabbits. Two of them give me minus 35 and minus 37 hunger, with there being an absolute chonking four kilogram rabbit, minus 86 hunger, and there's probably like 3,000 calories packed in that bad boy, with there being a pretty decent minus 58 one as well. Yeah, for three cabbages that I just grew out of my backyard, the returns are huge, and it only gets better the better I get. Let's retrap what little ones we can with the cabbage and worms we have. And I think we're gonna be cruising for the rest of the day. 
Oh man, it don't get much easier than this. You check your farm, you check your traps, you get food, you profit, you sit in your house and read for the rest of the day. Repeat that for about a year straight and we will become the ultimate survivor. Okay, I don't think we're gonna have enough cabbage to bait a lot of these traps, but most of them are already still ready to rock, so it's, you know, not that, actually a lot of these need more cabbages, but it can wait for now. Let's just drop off the food we have right now and worry about it tomorrow. Though I might want to get a new row of cabbages in, as I think that's going to be our power food. Yeah, you know what? Let's get a new one in right now, and then it's back to the reading grind. Oh, our farm just keeps getting bigger and bigger. I really hope it does rain soon because as happy as I am, we are kind of running a little bit low on water. And by low, I mean we've run through about a third of our water reserves. No, we're actually, we're fine. We're chilling. There really is not going to be a single time to where I get really worried unless it bumps up to like 130 degrees out of nowhere. But for now, we're chilling. Pun intended. Alrighty, it's a new day. You already know the drill. We check the farm. We check the traps, and once we're done with those two staples of my daily routine, I think we can incorporate a little bit of mechanics training. We brought this car all the way down to my parking lot, and I'll be damned if I don't start to dismantle and reassemble this bad boy every day of the week. We got the skills going for us, and we also have the tools is what I would love to say, but it does look like we are missing one thing, and that is a wrench. How in my entire life have I not come across a single wrench? Okay, wow, that kind of derails things. You think you're self-sufficient, and then you realize you're missing two key components in that grind, which is a jack and a wrench. So, I think this is going to be a half-and-half half skill grind episode with a little bit of looting. Let's go back into town to see if we can't find one at the nearby hardware store. We got a bow and we have a gun, so I'd love to see the zombies try anything, really. Plus, most of them should be dead from my escapades earlier. I'm not really worried, and it gives me time to actually build up some of our skills. Namely, metalworking, so this is a win-win for us. All we have to do is drive on down right back into the city center. I'll be real, there were a lot of zombies driving up here, but it does look like our efforts have not been in vain when it comes to this place, so I should be pretty free to disassemble what I like. We'll leave the car running, and it's about time for me to really kick off the grind. I kind of forgot how many damn appliances are in this place, so even if the power is out, we're gonna have a fantastic time in here. So yeah, I think it's about time for us to do a big old bot montage while also keeping an eye on our back because it could be very easy for a zombie to sneak up on my unsuspecting person. Oh cool, there's even some supplies back here. So let me just dismantle every single one of these radios inside here, and then we can get kick-started with the metalworking. Wish me luck. I also forgot that disassembling furniture items with a propane torch now depletes its fuel. But you know what's pretty freaking rad? <laughs> we got two grills right here with fuel all ready to rock. With every single roadblock I seem to come across, I have a solution quite literally next to me. Let's refuel the propane torch and keep her going. Bop, 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 bop. We're already up to level 4 metalworking, just like that. So now that we're kind of done here, I don't really want to do any more as disassembling items requires resources and I have to be a stickler for that kind of thing. So I think the next thing we're going to do is try to find the wrench in the hardware store and then I also kind of want to see if there's any other stores of interest before I leave. Also another really good thing, it looks like refilling the propane torches literally takes like 5% of our propane take in total, which means that I have so much fuel. Anyways, it's time to check out the hardware store for my wrench, which is quite literally here. Okay, cool. Is there a jack inside here that I could use? Because I do need one of those to do some mechanical stuffs, which looks like a hard no. That's fine because I can usually find a jack within the back of many different vehicles. 
Sadly, there was no jack within these two vehicles here, which is fine because I got almost everything I asked for when I came here with little to no resistance. We haven't even killed a zombie yet. <laughs> so let's go ahead up to the electronics store, disassemble all the televisions inside there, and then I want to go check out the upstairs area. It also looks like I, uh, may have talked a little bit too much before I actually got checked here. Okay, two zombie kills in a single episode, I'll take it. One thing's for sure, these bozos never stood a chance. Hell yeah, how's my temperature doing? It is a very solid 104 degrees, so I'm not really worried about getting overheated, but it is also a very real threat. Okay, cool, nothing in here? With there just being televisions. Let's get to level two right now. <laughs> Holy crap. Electrical is a pretty big grind. Even with all the TVs in here, we have not gotten to level two. With there being a massive pile of scrap on the floor. Zombies included those chuckle nuts. But I think we're going to call it quits for electrical here. Unless there's some stuff. Oh, there's a couple of flashlights in the back of here. We we'll might as well dismantle them. One thing's for sure, though. I will not run out of electronic scrap for my generators anytime soon. We got so many, it is unreal. I, I don't even know how long because I've only had to use like three electronic scrap in my 30 days of survival here. But the last thing that I will do is check out the upstairs area of this place because I really want to see what's at the end of the room with the barricaded looking areas. Also, what's in here? I do know that there's a zombie around, but you know, we can just we can just passively ignore that bozo. Which seems to be a toy slash novelty store. Yeah, nothing too good really. Kind of a sad thing, but you know, it's better I figure that out now than later. Ooh, they almost got me there. Oh, too slow though. I, I definitely was not panicking. Let's take care of the rest of these zombies and finish what we started. Come on, come on! Window cheese is for all. Ah, uh, like lambs to a slaughter. Okay, now I'm feeling a little bit more safe. Anyways, what do we have down here? Show me your secrets, mystery door. Please don't rebarricade it, just unbarricade it. Also, it does look like most of the zombies are downstairs, so I can be a little bit more safe. Ooh, there is a zombie on the other side, though. Ho oh, ho! Get the hell out of here. What do you have inside here, sir? Let's see what we got. We got scrap electronics, electrician volume two, a massive spiffo sign. Can I take it? Oh, I can! Oh! You know what? This entire trip was worth it. We got a new best friend. Much bigger than- <sighs> You ever see that trope of someone being in the desert and they see a mirage of water that looks like a beautiful oasis? That's Summer Steve right now. But like, it's real. That is how many water barrels? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh. Oh, today just got 10 times better. Okay, well, <laughs> don't mind if I do take all this home. I'm going to be taking it with me, which is going to take a little bit, and I am going to need to pour out all this water, but it will be worth it. I might honestly sleep here for the night. I mean, we don't have food, but I am willing to go hungry for at least one day because I know that the cabbages and stuff in the generator I have at home won't run out of fuel anytime soon. So yeah, you know what? I'm gonna camp here. As soon as we wake up in the morning, I am gonna lug all of those rain collectors back home. And hey, would you look at that? We also reached electrical level two because I did go into the back room of here and it just went to town on the radios inside this store here. That should be most of the zombies in the area, so I should have a pretty good night's rest. I can't wait to lug all these rain collectors back home and see the absolute pile I have when I wake up in the morning. It's going to be a good day. Matter of fact, it's already a fantastic day for Steve. This is one of the only series to where I could say he is truly thriving in this environment. And it feels pretty good after all the L's I've taken, you know? What I'm trying to say is that death flags aside, I think he has a chance. I'll see you in the morning though, and then it's gonna be water world. I did wake up at 2 a.m., but that's definitely not gonna stop me from getting what I want. It's just gonna be a little bit darker out.
Alrighty, we were able to make it back with every single rain collector barrel that I could collect. And by the way, I have to say, my luck is atrocious. I had a 30% chance to break each barrel, and I only left with 5 out of the 10. I deserve an extra 2 rain collector barrels, but RNG was just not forgiving. But still, having an extra 5 is pretty much overkill, especially because it wasn't even the goal in the first place. So the next time it rains, I will have enough water to last like an entire generation. Huh. Anyways, as I navigate between the hordes of the damned here, there are still a lot of zombies in the nearby area. Don't ever forget that. Like, uh, like an alarming amount of zombies if you're looking around, but it's not my problem as it's pretty far away. But now that we are placing down these extra rain collector barrels, I'll be honest, I don't see myself doing much else in this series. I mean, we've already established a farm that is obviously working with what little rain we have. I mean, we have seedling carrots, growing lettuce and cabbage, with enough water to water it 10 times over. Not only that, but we have a trapping system to where we can catch absolutely huge rabbits if we can trap every single trap crate, which only requires planks, which I can easily get from disassembling homes or going down to the good old train tracks that way. We have a 24 seven running generator that is very good in condition. And whenever it runs out of fuel, all I need to do is walk five feet down to the gas station. Yeah, I don't see myself dying to anything at this point, especially because the longer I go on with this series, the less the temperature is going to be a problem. The only reason it wasn't the problem at the start is because we started in July 4th, you know, the hottest time of the year. So now that we're kind of past the early game, there's not much else for me to do here other than to just like get richer. <laughs> What I'm really trying to say as I drop down these last few rain collector barrels is that I think we can survive 100 days at this point and I am going to do a heavily edited version of just me sitting on my butt reading books and getting to that point. I don't see myself doing any other thing so if I can make it to 100 days very sped up I'll count that as a win for Summer Steve. He's earned it at this point, okay? A lot of my Zomboid characters have died and one person needs to have a success story out of the five or 10 that have failed. So yeah, I guess I'm gonna end the episode here. I mean, come on, look at how many rain collector barrels I have at this point. It's, it is, it is funny to me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna end the episode here with the next episode most likely being the finale to the series as I survive 100 days. We are one third of the way there, so there is going to be a lot of waiting, but I am here for it. So I would really appreciate it if you guys liked this video, shared a comment down below and tell me your suggestions for the future. It's probably going to go for other series though. I'm kind of I feel like I'm done here at this point. We've I've done all I could with what little circumstance I've had. And even in this limited town environment, I have enough to keep me fed for the rest of my little life. I guess I'll see you all next time. Peace the hell out, everyone. Hey there, welcome and howdy to the final episode of the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge. So far, Summer Steve has survived one month and with the current setup, we can almost survive indefinitely. We have a thriving farm, copious amounts of water that renews with every single storm cycle, and lastly, a generator with a very large amount of gasoline. So I think we have this one in the bag. All we have to do is keep an eye on things and coast on through. But before that, I do have a few more objectives to complete. Number one, I want to collect more food and establish more freezers to hold the influx of it. Number two, I want to actually build and expand my base inside of the movie theater instead of just camping in the corner. And lastly, number three, I want to get a new and reliable looking car. Oh yeah, and during the meantime of all of this, I will also be leveling up my skills as much as possible, which includes reading. And for the first stage, it's time to start trapping and farming wholesale to build up our stockpiles. I started off the first day digging out massive amounts of furrows to have enough baiting material, netting me over 100 worms easily, which then led to me finding out that I had gotten my first seedling cabbages, 
so that means more rabbits and more seeds to plant cabbages with. After this point, the box traps were catching chunky rabbits left, right, and center. I then repeated this monotonous schedule for a while, up until I had gotten a new rain, which both filled up my water barrels and watered my plants all in one go, making the next week or so of my life very simple and easy. And out of excitement, I decided to plant yet another row of cabbages. Though with all of these rabbits and cabbages, the next problem were that my freezers were jam-packed with food. So I needed way more freezers in order to keep this up. And the plan for that was making my way over to the other gas station in search for the two-box popsicle freezer. I packed up my bow and left knowing full well that there would be a lot of zombies to provide resistance. And there definitely was. Way more than I had originally thought. So after shooting all of my arrows and attracting a massive horde, I decided that a tactical retreat to rearm myself was in order. But this time, we had a shotgun and a dream. I instantly drove back and gave the zombies a nice warm welcome. Is what I would have loved to do, but Summer Steve is pretty terrible at aiming. So all I really did was just bring more zombies to my location. To make things worse, the temperatures were also getting extremely warm. I became exhausted and sick from heatstroke. If I didn't change my course of action, I would have died a super anticlimactic death. So I decided to go for the tried and true Molotov technique, hopping into my AC-cooled car, throwing out a molly, and letting the zombies burn away while doing circles inside my car. I cleared out a massive horde, but I knew to call it quits when my tire had popped, driving back home and resting up for the day. Exhausted, but alive. I took this as a lesson that the high temperatures were always going to be around to kill me if I got too cocky and confident. The day after went much better though. I drove up with my three-tired car to the gas station, clearing out the opposition with a few well-placed shots. Sadly, there was no freezer inside of the gas station, but when I moved over to the nearby Gigamart, it revealed a popsicle freezer inside, making my trip worth all of the pain. Plus, we got a few gas station treats. With these new freezers, we should have more than enough food storage for the far future. And it seems like the indoors also has a limit on how hot it could be inside, with the temperature sitting at a fair 100 degrees during a 130 degree day, which meant I didn't need to worry about dying indoors. The last thing I did for this phase was butcher and bulk cook a bunch of rabbits to chomp on for the upcoming future. Now that the food situation was taken care of, it was finally time to look forward to creating a more permanent base location. And that started off with me taking care of the actual theater by destroying the seats with my sledgehammer. Once that's done, we have one main problem, and that's acquiring the resources to actually build it, which is a problem when our car only has three tires and we need to pack lumber back and forth from the train cars because of the lack of wood. So it's about time for old Summer Steve to hit the grindstone to acquire Mechanics Level 2 so I can actually hotwire and get myself a new vehicle. Sadly, that was the only option because we didn't have a jack to replace the tire. The grind was going to be boring, but over the course of a few days and then some, we finally got to Level 2 Mechanics, which means that the white car is now going to be our new mode of transportation. I then made a bunch of sheet ropes, took my sledgehammer, and cut out a few new paths from the Line. I got as many logs as I could, tied them up with sheet rope, and did multiple runs back and forth to build up as many construction materials. After catching even more rabbits and leveling up my trapping skill, I had accrued 11 piles of logs, which meant it was finally time to start building my base. After a very long amount of prep, it was finally time to begin construction on the base, which is definitely going to take the longest out of both stages. The plan I had to actually build out this base was going to have a partition right down the middle of the massive theater room to separate two big rooms, with there being a second story fit with a bedroom and party area. Thankfully, most of the walls were built, so all I needed to do was lay down the foundation. The second story did count as outdoors for a bit, but all it took was a restart of the game and we were golden. So after I set everything up with my blood set in tears, it was actually time to furnish the place, which meant looting nearby buildings for any cool looking furniture pieces. Thankfully, with our new car, it was going to be pretty speedy. 
I stopped by the bar first and found some nice pieces, including a bunch of counters, couches, and low tables. I would need to do it in pieces, as furniture weighs a lot in game, but the place was coming together nonetheless. So I also opened my reach to the gas station for its red carpets and posters, and the older radio station for its bathroom amenities and jukebox. I then set up a basic living room, kitchen, and bathroom, which all was looking pretty fantastic. After that, I checked the farms, the traps, collecting even more food, and then finally moved my way over to the spawn location where I started. Over there, I was able to find even more furniture and decorations for my base. I loaded up on those, took a few bits of lumber, and made my way back to slap down even more decor. I raided even more from the bar, and decided to have a cool drinking lounge for the second upstairs room. For my last trip, I found an extremely nice home with all of the last bits of furniture I needed, including a red fridge, an American flag, and some pretty nice low tables. The base looked fantastic near the end, and I was super proud of what I've made, thus marking the final chapter for the small journey. And I'll be completely honest, the final crawl was absolutely monotonous, as I have already completed everything I wanted to, though I did move my freezers to my actual base, turning my front area into a workshop instead. For the most part, it was just a bunch of reading and a bunch of homesteading, netting me so many dead rabbits and cabbages. Though I did forget about one thing while doing all of this, and that was finding a nice new vehicle to use. Thankfully, from previous experiences, I knew how to hotwire and replace windows, so nothing was unobtainable for me at least. I then drove down to the highway of the zombie congested traffic jam. There, there were a few zombies, but I was able to train them and gun them down one by one with my bow. After that, I had laid my eyes on a nice red hot rod. I decided it was going to be my main vehicle for the upcoming future, so I decided to tow it and went back to my base to hotwire and gas it on up. I did have to break a window, but all I had to do was take out another and replace it, which led to me having a brand new car. Just about, unless you count the window being, you know, replaceable. After that, it was all off time to where I continued to read and water my plants bringing me to my limit with the slow monotony of daily life, leading me to the final stretch. Hello and welcome to the final bit of the Pyrogenic Summer Challenge. I'll be honest, I'm a little ashamed of myself, but I did not make it to day 100. We have instead made it to around day 60. Yeah, day, day 59, just about 60. I did all I really wanted to do in this challenge, and I think going for another 40 days, another 40% of the challenge, I would have an aneurysm. But we have done a lot, a lot more than I've done in a lot of my other series, and I think we have reached a point to where, you know, we have a very comfy base, we have a very comfy amount. Really, what's killing me is just the monotony of every day, just checking the farm, checking the traps, repeating, doing something a little bit new. I mean, we've been doing a bunch of reading, and I could definitely get to 10 carpentry, and maybe even 10 in my all my other stats. But, um, I think I'm done. We finally moved out of our little, um, whatchamacallit. We finally moved out of our little lobby. We actually established ourselves a base. We have a food income that is spanning over four different fridges and freezers, all free rabbits and carrots and cabbages alike. Over 100 cabbages inside this freezer. And if that wasn't telling enough, we have become overweight. <laughs> I've been surviving so well, that's how you know. I mean, it's, it's a very comfy base. I'm very happy with how it actually ended up with the partition in the middle and then the stairs leading up to my bedroom and bar. And I think it's one of my more favorite uh, designs that I've done so far. Absolutely love the vibes of the bar. I kept it, you know, the old wooden plank just to stay with the theme. And yeah, I mean, it, it's as good as it's ever going to get, isn't it? We even got ourselves a little bathroom. It ain't plumbed, but it sure as hell does work. We have a technically new workshop area behind the counter. And over here, we have a brand new hot rod with my farm that continues to produce every single vegetable and fruit known to man. 
Matter of fact, we've just gotten even more seedling cabbages. I, by the way, I'm so good at farming, I can literally just pan over any crop and it tells me immediately what the stage is, which is really helpful. If that wasn't good enough though, we have ourselves <laughs> so many water barrels. It's been like tw 10 or like, it's been around 10 or 15 days since it last rained and I still have half my water reserves to go. And that's not even all the stuff inside my bathroom. We got a generator that's always running. And if I hop inside my vehicle here, I can show you my trap line and you know, it's going good. Also, this car is really freaking nice. Which we are here now. As you can tell, we have a lot of traps. They do break every now and then, but all I need to remake traps is wooden planks and nails, which are both renewable resources for the most part. I mean, we have like over a thousand nails and I'm not sure if you could tell, but the overall area is looking a lot more green recently, and that's because of the erosion system. So it, it's becoming a lot more green than it was at the start. The color palette is dulled, and I think that's very telling of how far I made it. And I'm pretty proud of where we are. Plus, we got, what, another six traps for birds? Yeah. Th this trap line is the food source that keeps on giving, and even if I did lose it, I would have enough resources to, to survive till winter, so we don't have to worry about that. And it's really just checking my farms and checking my traps and then immediately going back and reading books. So I think it's safe to say I won. I'm going to say I won just for my own sanity. I've done a lot here. I'm very proud of myself. We, this is actually one of my more long running characters, believe it or not. And hey, we really showed that challenge. What's up? But now it's time for Summer Steve to retire a very, very cozy life. <laughs> Anyways, I think this is the end of the challenge, for real this time. Summer Steve has survived one month, 28 days, and 22 hours, or I'll just round it up to 60 days. We're overweight, and our skills are pretty damn high, with my highest being a level 8 in carpentry and going on up. We got a 4 in cooking, a 4 in farming, 2 in electrical, 4 in metalworking, 2 in mechanics, 1 and a half in aiming, for just about five in trapping and four in foraging. I mean, the movie theater base really did pan out in the end. I love it a lot. But it's finally time to move on to a new series and hopefully, and maybe a few one-offs here and there. This is Private Lime and I will see all of you later. Peace the hell out everyone.